It's that time again. Uh, you know, Windows Utility, it is something that has gotten so big, a lot of times I feel like I'm just trying to keep my head above water. <laughs> it, but I mean, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, it, it's something that you have to keep on top of. Like every week, I'm at least doing something in Windows Utility. It seems like a lot of these streams are over Windows Utility lately. But that's mainly because I've just had some really big commits. And after you do like the addition of the ISO maker, there's still a lot of smoothing out and cleaning up uh, when you do a big commit like that. So that's kind of why it is, excuse me, the way it is. <laughs> How you doing, Pluto? Let's get chat up on the screen here. Uh, and, and I've been doing a lot of Windows. I've been in Windows a ton this month, which is kind of wild. Um, and, uh, you know, I love Linux and I need to get back into uh, probably I kind of want to revisit Nix OS a little bit. I always love Nix, but I never I think I still have some some smoothing out there as well, where I'm kind of like between. Uh, between things, uh, but I also want to re revisit Hyperland. There's just so much to do, so much to do. <laughs> and I'm alive early today. Uh, I, I usually work out early this day, but since it's Christmas week and uh, the fact that I went and played basketball with one of my old childhood friends uh, and I had barefoot shoes on, who knew playing basketball in barefoot shoes will result in many, many blisters on your feet. <laughs> that sucks. So the chances of me going and working out a whole bunch after that uh, is slim and none because I'm walking like an old man today. <laughs> How long will you be on Twitch today? Probably a couple hours, I'd imagine. At least till lunchtime. So, uh, you know, two, three hours, I'd say. Uh, we'll see how fast everything goes. I have been gaming a whole bunch. I know a lot of people, have, if, if you've subscribed to me over on Twitch, you'll probably see a lot more game streams anytime I've been doing that. So I've been kind of taking it easy this month. Yeah, I have to use Home Manager to really unlock the power of NixOS. 100% Harry. And I need to... That's why I kind of want to revisit it. Because there's so much left on the table last, last visit of NixOS. 100%. <laughs> Uh, speaking of virtualization, what's the last time you spun up a VM and did GPU pass through? Oh, let's see. Uh, it'd probably be right before my, my son wanted a, a gaming box. So I took out one of my GPUs and, and gave it to him. I'll do it again whenever the new Intel chip comes out. So I'll, I'll probably do that. Uh, privacy extension. I mainly just use uBlock. I don't really go crazy with privacy extensions because it usually ends up breaking a lot of websites. Uh, what extension do you use for changing the user? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I was using user agent switcher and it was the guy that like it was in a trench coat as the thing. Let's see, what am I doing? You still recommend GP edit tweak where Windows limits your internet speed? Um, AlterX, you know, I, I was, I need to look more at that tweak again. It's been a while since I revisited it. I have, uh, this, I think it was a couple streams back. We did a tweak with WinUtil that I'm going to actually undo a little bit. All right. Well, let's take a look at our, uh, WinUtil. I got a lot of pull requests to get through today. Some big ones, uh, remove thor thorium and mercury. I think that's probably the wise thing to do. Man, I'm still, uh, uh, man, it sucked having to private that uh, video. I got to say the best web browser I had to, I had to private it, unlist it and that thing, man, every YouTuber's nightmare, mainly because man, it was still making a lot of money. It was one of my top videos, but such is life can't be putting bad information out into the ether. All right, we're going to move Thorium and Mercury from the old toolbox. I think that one's a good one. Thanks, Monk, for that commit. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we already looked at that one. Ashlyn, I think, was adding a few programs. Holy balls. What? That is quite a bit of programs, Ashlyn. Wow. Ooh. That's not a few programs. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of wild. Okay. You know, I there's something about software, software names and titles. Um, if it has a really terrible name, typically it's a great project. That's what I've learned. I think when it comes to FOSS programs, if the name is absolutely atrocious, it's probably the, one of the best programs in the world. Just saying. That's usually how it is. That's what's attractive about this browser. It's the, a terrible name. I want to just call it Floor P instead of Florp. Think of think of from the the graphic programs out there. We got GIMP. Talk about. I mean, that's just like a that's like a slur. Oh. And then you got uh, Wine, right? Some it's like a reverse back acronym or some crap. Wine is not an emulator. And that's like, what? What kind of crackhead comes up with this? Like, these are just absolutely atrocious names for software. But man, is the software great. So the worse the software name in free and open source software, the better off you are. It's just something that uh, that uh, uh, works. So, you know, anytime I see a software name where I'm like, ooh, that's a cool name, I'm immediately skeptical. Immediately. It's probably not any good. I'm going to put it under a finer microscope, you know, microscope. Just be like, hey, is there problems with this one? The name, they've got their crap together, okay? I don't think this person, uh, there must be something shady about it. But if the name's absolutely terrible, I'm probably immediately going to think, okay, I think this one's good. <laughs> uh, oh. You know, they missed the Thorium dev. He really, I think if he would have just named it Furry Fox, that was a, that was a missed opportunity there. I think Furry Fox would have been totally okay. <laughs> that that would have been okay with that one. We were like, oh, I guess that makes sense why the name's Furry Fox. I wouldn't have had to take down that video if uh, that was just the name. Just a little more upfront about it. Mm. Yeah, such is life. All right. Yeah, you should make Titus Bra. I do not have the time to upkeep the browser. Everything would have to be automated. <laughs> Chris Titus Furry Doc. Yeah, people were freaking out, man. I got pinged so much when the, the furry stuff came out. I was like, I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, but I kept getting pinged on like Twitter and other places. And, I was, and then I think a couple of people in the, the Discord pinged me about it. And I was like, hmm. And then I think Brody was talking about it. Uh, and I was like, ah, it's not that big a deal. And then like the anti-circumcision stuff came out. I was like, oh my gosh. Tech people, man. Just stay away from politics and, and, and your your sexual preferences from getting put into the technology space you know just just make it about technology that's all i'm asking i don't care but you know i'm not i don't care what gets your jollies off or what your political leanings are you do you just don't just don't put it in the browser that's all i'm asking that's such a simple request <laughs> you know <sighs> and that, that's that's where I'm at. Like it'd be like if I started out every single video and was like, "You should vote for fill in the blank politician here." Ain't nobody watch me for that garbage. No, not cool. Anyways, just my just my two cents on it. Um, oh, he's removing copy Q. I like copy Q. Why? Why you remove copy Q? All right, let's see. Wow. This is actually quite a bit of additions. Oh, side quest. That's I've, I've used that a little bit. It's pretty good. Uh, Spotify actually doesn't work when using uh, Winget from an elevated prompt. Uh, that'll actually bomb out. Mm, what else we got here? Just a bunch of WSL stuff. Workstation player I actually use quite often. Win platter. What is that? I've never seen that before. 
Oh, it's an appearance editor. Interesting. Open source. I know most of this stuff will be good. Ashland's really good about a lot of it, so I'm sure it's a good commit. I'm just curious of what it is. This looks cool. Anybody uh anybody in chat know wind platter? Have you ever used this? Interesting. You can change the tone of the wallpaper. Ooh, you can change the tone of the terminals. Ugh, classic colors, gross. Wow. Very cool. All right. Paliter. Paliter. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Yeah. I failed English class, guys. I only speak one one language, English and bad English. And I know enough to curse in about 10 different languages. I don't know why I had an obsession about learning curse words in other languages, but, you know, such is life. All right. Very cool. WireGuard Wise Toys. Ooh, I don't know if I like Wise Cleaner. Uh, let's see. Huh. Maybe I was thinking of a different software. All right. Well, interesting. Should be good. XEMU. I don't think I've used XEMU, have I? Oh, okay. I see what we got there. XJournal++. Is that like a spin of Notepad++? Okay, take handwritten notes with ease. Lots of really cool cool uh, additions here. X-Pipe. Yeah, Bleach Bit's pretty nice. Your entire server infrastructure at your fingertips. Ooh. Yeah, Ashland has some really, really good... This looks awesome. What's the pricing on this? Oh, free. I like free. Okay. Zim. Anybody use Zim? Zim Wiki? Wiki? A lot of tools here I have not seen. A desktop wiki. Lots of note-taking stuff I haven't seen. Znote. Zoxide is so awesome. I love Zoxide. What's Zulip? All right. Open source chat. I mean, God bless. We got enough communication stuff out there. Ah, it looks nice. Looks like a, a better version of Slack, maybe. Well, all right. I like it. Uh, as far as this goes, looks like... So we got that. Uh, I'm just going to look for any red removals. WSL apps. Paint.net. Let's get moved here. Open the VPN. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Fixing some spacing errors. And that looks all good. But I did see that X copy. I want to just look that up. That was the only, or copy Q. So there's copy Q here, but I didn't see it down here. Oh, he just moved it into the right spot. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. That looks good. Let's approve that. Submit that. We're good. Tari, thanks for the tier one. Oh, look, a button press. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it, the utility is turning into a complete uh, software center. Like, geez, I didn't think it would be like like this. But it's okay. Um, Meld, Mercury, Moonlight. Uh, do we have Moonlight in here? Let's see. Moonlight. So here's Moonlight. Is there any other Moonlight searches? Yeah, I really don't see anything. Okay. So looking through here, it looks like uh, Moonlight is only there. So it's mainly just Mercury that is getting removed. So let's just back that out. Moonlight's fine. Mercury we're going to remove. And Meld. I don't even know what Meld is, but so be it. Okay, mark is resolved. Win util, I really don't care about this. It's all just gonna get overwritten anyways. Um, oof, uh, ooh, let's see here. Probably need to do changes here. What's a better way of doing conflict resolution in GitHub? Because I feel like doing it manually like this is just 
not great. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Anyways, yeah. All right. We'll just do it like this. Looked at plugins in VS Code. Oh, okay. Can we just open this in VS Code? I need to... Yeah. Let's see. Look at this. I think we'll do a recompile anyways. And we got to fix unit testing as well. Ugh. So much to fix. Uh, Qtox in session. All right. I'm still going to screw this up. Uh, let's let's uh, see here. Let's do VS Code and see if I can't load this up in here. All right. Um, conflict resolution. I should be able to pull all this in directly in VS Code, but, you know, so be it. Okay, now I think we can look at the PRs directly in VS Code. Uh, dismiss, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did, Michael. Probably should look at a lot of those news articles and stuff, too, which I will get to. I think I have Git Lens. Yeah, Git Lens. Jeez, I need to... I got this set for a blind man. Um, proper way of looking and reviewing stuff let's first appearance uh da, 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 control let's reset zoom had it set to old man mode um so i got git lens how am i gonna do the pr best way to review prs in vs code let's see Ah, thanks, Raji, for the Prime. Able to get DWM going on OpenSUSE install. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I need to revisit DWM as well. Let's see here. Let's just see. How do I want to approach reviewing PRs? Let's go Git Lens down here. Pull request, what do we got? So here's Git Lens. Look at the commits, but no. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Branches. These are old branches. Can we like flush these? Nah. Remotes. Okay. Do I have any stashes? I don't think I did. Five months ago. Can we just delete that? Drop stash. Hmm. Code reviews. Get Thanks, hot. Let's see what we got. All right, let's see how to review efficient code reviews, Git lens, efficient code, inline blame. I like that. That's what I was using Git lens for was the inline blames, just so I could see who committed what. File blame, that's great. I want to look at pull requests, code lens. Yeah, that's what I was mainly using it for. Sidebar reviews, uh huh. Version file history, git command palette, huh. Oh, the git commit graph I was using as well. I remember that. It was really nice. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I almost want to do it offline, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I feel like we could get it going. Oh, there we go. Let's. All right, so we do a PR checkout using the GH. And then once you do that, it should probably pull it in. And then we can just accept the changes. Um, what would that look like? So here's the commit graph. What does that give me exactly? Ah, okay. That's so cool. Ugh. Well, you're going to get to see me learning. And hopefully I don't screw all this up. The beauty of Git is we can always roll back if I really really screw the pooch on this one <laughs> Michael thanks for the gifted subs all right let's see what we got uh, I'm just trying to find where the PRs would be I imagine that would be branches right let's just do a refresh maybe see these are old branches that are just kind of chilling out so all this is 
been missing but these are just like old cache files probably just chilling out in my git directory i could probably delete those and it'd be fine so here's this and then under test here we go so this one okay so we just merged that and let's look at oh geez Because the commit itself, let's look. Add a few programs. It's number 1256. So 1256 in here would be... So there's all these compiles, but I don't see... This is what already has been committed. And if we look, this is just older stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't show existing ones in the remote. Okay. So let's come back to here. This is the activity bar. Can we look at, maybe we can just do 1256. Does that show 1256? It does not. I swear, you gotta have like a PhD to work Git properly. <laughs> oh man, all right. Source control we already looked at. Get inspect. Can we pull in that visual file history? That's kind of pointless. VS code, pull request, GitHub. All right, Dath. Thanks for hanging in there while this noob looks up how in the world to do this. All right. This extension allows you to review and manage GitHub pull requests within Visual Studio. It includes authenticating. Ah, see, this is what I need. And it's under the PR tab right here. What's this called? VS Code Pull Request GitHub. Do I not have that over here? Must be an extension, huh? All right. Pull request. Oh, here we go. Does that add? I need more extensions. That's obviously what my problem is. All right, great. So now we have that. Uh, do we need reload? Let's reload, I guess. And now we should have a pull request on this side. Maybe. Dude, I don't think I need all this. Let's let's remove some of the stuff I don't need. Oh, I'm not signed in. One second. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I need. Beautiful. Ah, all right, we got there. Ah, I was like, let me just go ahead today it's going to look like a floundering fish just flopping around on land, but we're going to get there today. I'm going to fix the things instead of just kind of muddling through it like I have been. Fix the processes so then in the future we can get through things faster. I hate everything Microsoft. A fair point. A fair point. Ugh. Extensions you like the most. You know, I like Copilot. I really do. It does save me a lot of time because it kind of figures out what I'm typing in. Now, mind you, most of the syntax is wrong most of the time, but I love how it does a lot of auto formatting. It kind of reads my style of coding and then it just like recommends more of the same of how I code. So then I just like, oh, okay, cool, accept and then just change a few things to fix the code. I really dig it. Really, really dig it. Let's see. When I use the tool, it does a system restore on Windows PowerShell and it gives me an error when I use PowerShell 7. Um, do you have any ideas what could be wrong with the program? That's a good one, gaming. Um, one, the main issue from that is the difference between PowerShell Core and PowerShell. They are not the same. You can't use PowerShell 7 in in place of, I think this is core. Uh, if we look, uh, da, da, da. I can't remember. I always get confused with, with that. Uh, let's go terminal. So this is PowerShell 7, but it's not quite the same. Um, dude, it, it, Microsoft and the naming schemes behind the software. But you have to go terminal with admin and it is not the same as so this is completely different from then going powershell 
7. It looks the same, but it's not the same. I don't know why, but... Microsoft. Uh, so anyways, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it's like they purposely make stuff that is just like, what? Uh, but yes, that's the main problem you're having there gaming is how you're launching PowerShell and the version of PowerShell you're using. There's literally multiple lots and lots of different versions of PowerShell that aren't all the same and they have different dependencies. I'm working on trying to make them as compatible as possible, but there's just like really weird differences and nuances to them. Um, I know I'm working on trying to get a universal, but they, they're just not created equal. And uh, I try to make PowerShell 5 the one that's there just for legacy support of Windows 10, and I don't lean on launching PowerShell 7. I, I might be able to figure out how to relaunch into PowerShell 5, which or a core. Shit, I, I, I don't know. I forget which one's which. Is it PowerShell 5's core or is PowerShell 7 core? The naming conventions in PowerShell are made by a crackhead at Microsoft. Several crackheads. I don't know. Ah, I just know there's a huge difference between the two. <laughs> uh, and then there's CMD, yes. And uh, yeah, there's... Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, but that's, that's the main problem in gaming is... Uh, just know that there's a huge difference between the two. I always end up launching my tool, and it usually always works. Just terminal with admin. It launches into a, a PowerShell version you should be using. And I, I want to say it does use the 7 code set, but it's not the same as launching it through the start menu in PowerShell 7. Why? I don't know. Yeah, but it's maddening. Absolutely maddening. I mean, I wish they just named it a completely something different, like microsoft shell or something and say hey instead of using power like why'd they use the same naming convention if there's so many differences between the two <sighs> i digress i get a little worked up microsoft it, it's hard to stay zen when you're dealing with microsoft <laughs> oh man all right here we go let's uh let's look here add a few programs oh okay so here's the description i like it okay so how do we use this let's look back on our okay so you look at what it is add any comments directly right here and what else can you do okay there's the fetch and this is just probably going to add that comment again. Okay, yep. All right, configure the extension. I'm not going to customize it. That's fine. All right, let's see if we break the project or not. I feel like we got enough. Uh, sorry for making your brain hurt. Why doesn't Microsoft add Power Toys apart as Windows 11, etc., instead of adding an on as an add-on program? It's just a huge... Uh, a huge working machine and you got to remember there's thousands upon thousands of different programmers all kind of working in tandem and Microsoft products have always been kind of a crapshoot like they take the shotgun approach of just shoot and just see where everything goes and it just kind of splatters everywhere and you're like okay what what works, what doesn't, uh, and then they just kind of, there's a lot of really cool projects Microsoft's made, but they just do it in such a haphazard fashion. And their big thing is they never have teams talk to each other. So you'll even have even more maddening than PowerShell. And I'm not gonna get into it, but teams, like they want people to use teams, but then there's like four different versions of teams. There is business and personal, and then there's subversions of those versions. So you have the Microsoft Store version that is put on there. And you're thinking, oh, okay, so now there's a Microsoft Store version that is there's a business and, a, and then a personal side of that. And then there's the executable setup that there's a business and personal of that. So four versions, right? Simple. Four versions when there should be one version. 
But no, you'd be wrong because guess what? There's there's even more versions because sometimes the Microsoft Store app is actually pre-installed as a provisioned app instead of the actual Microsoft Store app. So therefore you have an entire new version. Confused yet? Well, guess what? Then there's different versions of the actual executable and <laughs> just, ah, you just, you, thinking of teams just makes a person like an IT person it's how it's it's how it people have psychotic breaks i think ah just a small rant about teams anywho luckily i don't really have to deal with that very much businesses i go into they hate teams they're like i just want to use zoom i'm like cool i'm okay with that <laughs> because there's one version of zoom you install it and it just works <laughs> yeah oh geez it's wild it's just wild but that's microsoft in a nutshell okay so we have the file here so we have the original file and the modified file so can i just like open changes okay file annotations file history share i wonder how i accept the pull request so let's say i wanted to accept it uh, let's refresh it, I guess. Let's see what we got. But let's... So, what happens if I check it? Mark is viewed. Okay. We viewed the files. So, now let's say we want to take the pull request. We could check it out. We have it already pulled up. So, if we open it up here. So, let's say we approve it. Okay. That's good. Is there a merge? Okay, I've double approved it, but good to know you can do it here. <laughs> we use Teams extensively at my work. Oh man, I'm sorry. But I mean, I think it's not so bad. It's just starting from a, um, like with my, how I do Teams is I wipe out everything there, track down all the existing versions of Teams, wipe them out from the computer, and then just install the version that the business uses is my methodology behind it that way everyone has the same version and you're fine well we use skype oh my god no well that's just even worse than teams skype is malware oh it's also microsoft too i mean skype wasn't very good before microsoft got it but it's really not good now oh my god skype yo you need to have some talks with your boss. Be like, hey, man, Skype 2023? Really? Let's uh, let's get above a room temperature IQ and go to something different. <laughs> Dude, Skype, no way. No way. Uh-uh. <laughs> I mean, Google Meet's not bad. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's, I, I, if you have like the G suite, it actually works pretty decent, but man, Skype 2023, bro, Skype needs to go away. I'm just waiting for Microsoft to pull the plug on Skype. It's going to happen. Eventually they're just going to be like, no, this is just a, uh, a, a just complete malware and just straight up, a uh, spaghetti string mess of a program. We're just going to move everybody to Teams and streamline that. I wish they would do that. That would be so much better because Skype is just awful. <laughs> what room temperature are you talking? Office building or server room? For Skype, it might be server room. We might be looking at the 60s in here um, <laughs> for that. Oh, All right, so we know how to pro approve pull requests through here. Speaking of room temperature IQs, let's see if I can't figure this out. So we got check out pull request, open. So if I check out the pull request, okay, I approved it. The branch has conflicts that must be resolved. Okay, what do we do here? Okay, so we've already viewed the file. We've marked it. We've seen the changes. There's gotta be a review of some sort. Yes, there is branch protection. Click the plus. All right, where's the plus? Plus. All right. Yeah, because I don't allow. So what I, these are is there's branch protection on the main branch. 
main branch, we don't allow any commits directly to or any PRs directly to. Only a combined PR from the test branch to merge on the main branch. Um, I need to probably do like tags and versioning a little bit better, which we might explore. Um, but right now that's how we we kind of do things so i take each individual one on the test branch usually once there's like a handful of prs i'll usually merge them onto the test and then once i test out the test branch it's in the name uh i then i merge the test to the main and then that's like a, a new version for everybody but i like to kind of isolate it out that way there's better ways of doing it with release tags and things like that which i need to learn Obviously, still a noob when it comes to a lot of GitHub stuff, but I'm, I'm getting there. So if you hover over a file, you should see a plus symbol. So let's say we get over here. We have this open file. So let's say we open this file and we have it. Mark file is not viewed. Open pull request diff view. Um, open changes. File annotations split. And we have comments for the file itself. And if we look at the config, okay, that's fine. This is the diff view or the pull request view. And do we have anything in our context menus? We do not. Hmm. We do not have the plus symbol for hovering over the file. If we look at files this way. That's the commits. And no. Maybe... The green changes box. Okay, so let's go plus over here. This is just commenting that specific code, it looks like. And if we wanted to do a suggestion. So this is like, let's say we're like, oh, hey, what's going on with this? Hey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, add the comment directly at that line of code, which is kind of cool. I love that. Um, but that's not quite what we need. I'm going to get it. We're going to get it. <sighs> yeah, we have an unresolved conflict between here. So let's pull up. This is, I think, where all the unresolved conflicts are. So how do we accept this version? So let's say we want to accept this one instead. Because this is where WinUtil is a compiled file, and we should be able to accept these changes uh, from the file conflict. Would I, would I take a, a contract for five years if they pay me one mil a year? Yeah, of course. Who wouldn't? Uh, I don't care what it is. Even if I had to learn 30 new skills, I would take that in a heartbeat. That's $5 million. I'd be set for life. So yeah, I think anybody would with half a brain. <laughs> Uh, I might be a little bit stressed on those five years, but yeah, I would take it. Okay, what are the three icons to the right of change pull requests in 1256? Uh, so these, we have view as list, refresh, and collapse. So we do have conflicting things. We have to resolve these red conflicts. So how do we revert change? I don't want to revert the change. I want to just accept this change. Um, as far as the micro win, we might actually touch on that curio, uh, that one, we still need to, I need to adjust some of those stock settings. Uh, so they're not quite as, um, limiting and there's certain things like removing the Xbox app and other things that I don't particularly like. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, so that's, that's where we're at with, with that. Um, Hmm. And reverting that change is not what I want to do. If we open the file, is there... Yeah, that's not... So we've already approved the pull request. How in the world do you do it from here? Let's see. Let's go back into our VS Recall. Okay, we got remotes, queries, how to build, making pull requests. Yep, yep. God bless. What a convoluted mess this is. All right. So we have our pull request here. And this is this change ones right here. If we want to open the pull request, this one will open and then tell us we have conflicts. 
since the pull request 1256 should load up loading load up uh we got an error okay uh e connection reset failed okay well can we uh, maybe because i started to do commits in the web and then it was like oops um let's just exit out of that i guess it should still say yeah we still have these conflicts must be resolved so let's leave that as is let's close this try to open up the pull request now it works okay so we have the pull request open we've already checked this out so we do, do source control because if we look it has this branch conflicts must be resolved which makes sense so then we go source control and under source control we should have our pr let's see where, where is that we've checked it out hmm so we have the commits from here why is this so complex why did, ah. all right 19 commits okay see pull request uh, to the right okay this is a pull request hover over it for a minute hmm and if we look I wish there was like a button to click here to look at the conflicts and then we should be able to accept that's the whole whole reason we're doing this is just to resolve conflicts okay try right click this is just gonna modify the sys tray it looks like um man uh, yeah so let's say i wanted to accept these so here's the open working file no 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 so we can look okay source control branches 1256 compare with test okay can you give me that so we're comparing the pr 1256 with the official test branch and open changes with working file open file at revision mark as reviewed so this shows all of this which is fine right so if we go marked as viewed open changes with working file i'm about to just say f it and go the way i've always done it and just do it through the web but i mean this should be much simpler screw it <sighs> Apply changes. I mean, we could try that. Retry and allow conflicts. Yes. Okay. Did that work? The thing about it is, this is going to remove a lot of stuff from other commits, too, I think. Just, I don't want to screw this up. All right. It was a great idea, guys, but it's such a big project, and these these add-ins just aren't making any damn sense to me. So, like, let's let's just refresh this um, lead page. Yeah, let's resolve the conflicts here because apparently I don't know where the hell to resolve the conflicts is in VS Code, and it's just a huge mess. So. Let's just resolve these conflicts. We'll leave Moonlight. We are removing Mercury. And that. Okay. So those conflicts are done. We have no more. That one's done. This one. All right. We have this conflict, which is just a versioning. We'll remove it. Easy peasy. It's, it, it just would be nice if this pulled into VS Code and it would just be like, okay, accept. But such is life. All right, next conflict, we have uh, Qtox. We actually do want the Qtox. That must be from like an earlier commit or something from somebody else. And can we tab that over? Clean that up a little bit. All right, that's nice. Next, we have DOSBox and DevToys and then Duplicati. We actually want to take both of these. So I don't see duplicati, devbox. 
or any of that. I do see dev toys twice. So we have dev toys here and here. Let's uh, clean this up. Maybe two commits together. So there's that uh, duplicati. And ooh, we also have install error lookup. Let's see, Windows error code lookup. Dev toys we've already got and duplicati. And then we just need DOS boss. One more try. All right, let's try it. We'll, we'll try it on the next commit. I'm just going to get this commit done. I kind of want to just kind of clean this thing up, making sure it looks nice. All right, that looks good. Next. And that's our, I know it's the same thing, but that was just from the app. Our compile, I'm not sure is working. I probably don't need to go through all this one by one, but I am going to because we're going to do all these changes once again. That's good. And we have the last one. So this was Duplicati Dev Toys, Duplicati Dev Toys. Uh, we'll just remove this guy. And I should have just accepted the commit and compile and then just recompiled it at the end, but it's okay. We can clean it up. We'll just redo our work twice. All right. Next, previous. And Q talks up here. Uh, checkbox name session. Let's get that. Perfect. All right, Marcus resolved. Commit merge. We'll try the next one after this. We have that. It's going to our test branch. Let's merge that bad boy in. Yeah, and what I wanted, why I was just like, let me just do it the old way because I already kind of started merging this branch and doing some commits. So I want to try the next one fresh and see if we can't fix it. So now we're down to six pull requests. I haven't touched anything else. Let's do like a simple one. Like this is going to be super simple. Uh, install Steel Series. So we have that. We have WinUtil and input. So it's really just changing a few things, some spacing fixes. This is the most simple PR out there. That'll be a great one to test for this. So let's get out of that page. We're here. And that's going to be number 1265. Let's, uh, let's give it a whirl in VS Code again. And I am going to look at hot machines. Pull request merge and conflict extension. See, maybe, maybe we just got the wrong extension. Good Lord. Uh, we need, um, all right. All right. Pull request merge conflict extension. Pull request merge by Microsoft Dev Labs. All right. Another extension. I have way too many extensions, but whatever. It's VS Code. Uh, merge conflict hmm all right for some odd reason it wasn't allowing me to add it through there so um why isn't this pulling up this extension is not for vs code ah well that would that'd be why it's for visual studio probably community yeah yeah that's community cs project yeah so that's just visual studio community extension jeez you think it'd be right here it has to be the pull request issues merge conflict why is this so hard all right try diff and merge okay let's try that all right, here's diff and merge. Let's try this extension. I like the name of it. Extensions enabled globally. Let's just close it, relaunch. So the weird thing here is my pull request uh, extension thing. It uh, it actually looks like it's. Let me just. I'm gonna take some of this. Source control search. Extensions, GitHub inspect, get Colab pilot. What, what's Copilot Labs? I'm going to clean up some of this. 
So here's our pull request under GitHub. Now, let's say we take this one in. We check this out. It means we need to check it out, review it, and then say, okay, yes, approve, and then diff and merge, look, look for differences, and resolve any conflicts. So we look at it, are like, great, everything looks good here. Perfect. So we viewed that one. Input example file. Um, we actually want to revert this one. And this actually should be like that. Let's revert that one. Revert that one. Okay, this this seems like oh nope. Let's Steel Series was needed. Okay. So we see our little thing over here. Uh, okay. So that was good. Let's say we approve it and move on to the next. That looks great. Looks great. Perfect. So not very much going on there. Let's go to the next change, which should be right in here. Uh, it's not showing. Oh, here it is. Steel series. Perfect. So there's our change there. Everything looks good. Perfect. So once this is done, we should be able to open the PR. So we're like, okay, great. Perfect. We click on this to open the pull request. Awesome. So we are going to approve this. We'll say approve. And now how do we resolve the damn conflicts? <laughs> That's where we're catching up. So the diff and merge should be here somewhere to resolve that. So we have this. Files changed. Okay, source control changes. So we got source control. Boom. Oops. Then we go to changes, which is right here, right here. All right, we got that. And then open diff and merge. Uh, where's that? Diff and merge. Open diff and merge. Okay, great. So we have this one. These are all the changes that we're doing. Just literally five lines. Right? Oops. What did I do? Don't say. Oh, there is a plus symbol. Okay. So stage of the changes. Oh. What happened there? Oh, it took a while. Okay, there's a lag period. So we just have these three changes that we're doing. So if I click it, give it a wait, wait a little bit, it loads the diff and merge. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, it does. So then here's the diff and merge. It just took a while. You know, I think last week we did a Toretto modification preferring IPv4 over IPv6. And I feel like that added some latency. I think we should revert the pre preference on that to just be like, hey, uh, IPv6. Uh, it's fine. You're feeling your local machine power versus VS kit. Okay. Jeez. I didn't think it was really that bad. Might might be due for an upgrade here, guys. Uh, maybe Santa will bring me something for Christmas. Okay. So here's the diff and merge. I don't see anything problematic about this. Let's... It's, it all looks good to me. I don't see any changes. The right side looks completely clear. Let's see. See, I'm, I'm looking. I don't, it all looks exactly the same. So it's fine. So we stage the commit. Okay. We look at changes. It says zero. Right? So we stage all changes. And let's just say fix spacing. I mean, that's pretty much all this is doing. We commit it. Okay. We sync the changes. Close it, close it, close it. Let's uh, refresh our PR. So refresh, refresh, which would be, all right, let's just uh, be under source control. It'd be GitHub and then under here over open. 
So we should be able to click this and say, hey, open the PR again and still have conflicts. So close. Did you press plus on changes? Um, I thought so. I thought we staged them and then committed the changes. Because this is checked out, right? So we have this. It shows checked out. If we go source control, under source control, we should have, under changes, right click the XAML file, it's the last one. <laughs> yeah, that was me. View changes. And if we look down here, that's that. Those changes look good. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Like, why is this so hard? I feel like it's just, it's, it feels like there's just something just staring me right in the face and everyone's screaming at their, you know, screaming at the screen. <laughs> it's simple. Just use Vim. Just use Vim is the answer. See, these changes should work. And I was the one to commit them. Switch to a different. Pull this now. All right. I approved them. There's nothing else from the PR here and here. So let's say we're going to merge this. Now it's, it's a PR. Push, pull. Um changes there is no changes press refresh maybe let's refresh it nothing under source control merge uh do a search for conflict headers go to get and see what it has to say okay right next to checkout main oh refresh let's hit refresh yeah see it still shows conflicts must be resolved all right check out to test branch and then merge it to test I thought <laughs> so we checked out this one so let's go back and let's go this is our local one here's all the PRs waiting for my review and if we look at github uh, let's just close this all right do we have okay there's the issues pull requests so you just got issues and pull requests on the github tab let's go to github pull request right here show all changes okay let's click the diff and merge again cannot read properties fine diff and merge again no <sighs> well thanks for the tier one there nav Right click the XAML file, okay. Compare with pull request head or compare pull request with local. We have them right here. If we go diff and merge, you can't really read. So the diff and merge plugins not working right. I do like the teleprompter because when I'm reading chat, you can kind of see me read your, your chat, which I, I kind of like. <laughs> Uh, Draconis, we're actually going to look at Microwin. There's there's some things there um, that needs to be streamlined and looked at a little bit more, a little more polished that needs to happen under Microwin, but we're not quite there yet. But yes, uh, as far as the nav, uh, to answer your question about the uh, teleprompter, I'm it, it is working really well. I don't use any of the official tools for it. I just treat it like a second monitor, and I just drag my chat over onto it. Uh, so I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Yeah, this is just maddening. I thought there would be like a accept all changes and make this a lot easier on me. But I don't see how this is any more efficient in this. <laughs> it's just like you can have rocket science and VS code slash extensions and source control to understand half of this shit. It's just awful. Okay. Well, anywho, let's just resolve conflicts here. Go, okay, what are the conflicts? Okay, error lookup, dev toys duplicati. All right, great. Perfect. Um, KDE connect, KDE connect. 
doesn't really matter, honestly. I don't know why that's even conflicting. Maybe there's like an extra white space or something. Nope. Don't know on that. Uh, we'll go here. And what do we have? Do we have any more conflicts? Yeah, as much as this is kind of like, oh, okay, there's these conflicts. All right, that's fine. How many how many conflicts were in this one? Just one. Okay, marked as resolved. Commit merge. Oh, this is on the main branch. Okay. Oh, but he's it's just his main branch. Uh, but the commit is coming to test, so that should be fine. Squash and merge. So I don't know why the web experience is so simplistic and the VS Code experience is just a complete shit show. But I mean, it's Microsoft logic again. I mean, we've, we've already gone into a Teams rant and a PowerShell rant. What, why would Visual Studio be any different? If the file shows up in source control, right-click the file, and the last one is the diff. Okay. Yeah, it just, it's, it's just not pulling in the conflict resolution because I, it should be simpler than here, and it should be easier to accept the conflicts. However, it's just... There's so much garbage everywhere in VS Code that it's it's just impossible to look at. I'm sure if I was really, really in here day in and day out, I would be a lot easier than the web-based version. But right now, it's almost easier for me to do it by hand on the web than it is VS Code. <sighs> when you tilt the GitLab. Well, I mean, GitHub usually has better tools. Uh, but, I mean, you can use Git or... You know, you can use Git Tia. There's a lot of them. Bitbucket. So, yeah. VS Code's UI is complete trash. 100% agree. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at on that. Um, let's keep moving. Let's just keep moving forward. Test branch. Almond Cheese. What do we got? Almond Cheese. Great name. LMSS. All right. Very simplistic. What is LMS? LMMS. Huh. It's a sharing platform. It's a digital audio workspace application program. That's neat. Synthesizing sounds and other things. All right, cool. I like it. All right, let's approve that. Submit. Resolve conflicts. It's always the resolve of the conflicts. All right, we can bring chat back. And, oh, okay. Do we have an LBRY here? Huh. I'm fine, actually. I don't really like LBRY that much. Let's just wipe that out. And we'll just tab that over. I need to clean up some of these. All right, that looks good. All right. Next Linux stream. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted it to be this week, but just depends on where things are at. Right now, a lot of uh, a lot of my time gets put to the Windows utility just because so many people use it. All right, let's see. Oh, that looks good. Mark is resolved. Commit. Just think there'd be a better way, but oh well. Oh yeah, the NixOS poll request. I did see that. We can take a peek. I don't mind popping over there. Let's uh let's see what we got. I need a little break. A little break from when you till right now. Uh let's sign in here one second. Try not to flashbang you guys. Switch my theme around. All right. Flashbang. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh I'm even using Octobox for my GitHub notifications because i just have so many notifications and so many different repos that trying to sort that out with github is impossible <laughs> uh so what i love about octobox is you can actually just go to down here and go okay what do i have let's go to nix os okay so there's this one we can archive that and we can click on here Rubik's Cube, updated NixOS for more up-to-date layouts. Mark the syntax is going to be. Great. Let's uh let's view that on GitHub. So I think you can just 
click. Oh, no. Nope. Where is, oh, view on GitHub right down here. So he removed documentation, enable equals false. And he commented out the bootloader. Ah, and made the timeout bootloader enable and EFI. Okay. So these, these are what was there. He added a timeout supported file systems in TFS and temp clean on boot. So it cleans out temp files. Very cool. Anything else is normal user equals true description. We got network manager, wheel, audio, video and libvirt D. I would have liked to keep like KVM in there and input probably maybe add those back, maybe even disk, but it depends on um, they're not really that important unless you're doing like PCI pass through or something. Uh, nerd fonts, good addition. And virtualization, just removing white space, white space, and then white space, it looks like. Oh, this is deprecated. White space, white space. And then we got auto upgrade channel, it gets upgraded to 24 from 23. And that should be good. Okay. That all looks like good stuff. It's kind of nice to just look at a more simplistic project. Oh, it makes merge requests so much easier. All right. A nice little distraction. We merge that in. We can archive that guy. Cool. And this one's merged down to four pull requests. <laughs> uh, what made you start off the win util project in the first place probably the biggest thing was i had a powershell script and i used to just make videos like five videos a week i think is what i was at at the time it was 2020 so i was i was churning out videos and i was just going okay what else do i have uh, and I was just looking through my files and I found this script I use quite often in business to set up machines. And I was like, oh man, that would be so much nicer uh, for other people to use this. So I tried, tried to just kind of customize it and generalize that script so everyone could just run it and then they have a sane default Windows setup. And that's where it all came from, was just a PowerShell script. But there was some settings that people would say, I want to change and I go, okay, well, if you want to change that, then, uh, I'll try and make uh, a question. So I, I made questions in there and then people are like, these questions are such a terrible interface. Can you make it like a GUI? And I was like, well, it's a PowerShell script. I guess I could like pull in some janky win forms and that was okay. So the first iteration of the GUI was win forms with all absolute values. So stuff didn't even line up properly and there was no dy dynamic resizing like there is now and it was it was very rudimentary and then it just kind of slowly i get more pull requests and other things and then we're like hey can we make this faster and we're like oh oh well, there's run spaces and i'm not very good with run spaces even to this day and you know that's when like developer derp and some other contributors came in and really helped with uh run spaces and then I was like, oh, that's great. And it just kind of took on a life of its own. And we just got so many con contributions that it just requires a lot of time to, to maintain now. That's why a lot of my streams now is WinUtil. I know a lot of people love the Linux streams, but uh, I, I can't let the project uh, fall, fall down. So a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of my week is WinUtil up, up, up to, uh, upkeep which it's fine. I mean, I, I get a lot of donations every day from it. So it's, it's worth it uh, for sure. It's just takes a, takes up quite a bit of time. And heck, you're just looking at the pull requests here. We have 379 pull requests that we've done on the project. And this is just, this is the second iteration after we switched it to run spaces with XAML. The original one was actually called a Win 10 script before Windows 11 came out back in 2020 and I closed that one out and created WinUtil 
uh, because it was just such a big revamp. And it was, that's when I actually changed the project. So actually, this is probably close to five or 600 pull requests uh, that we've sifted through and done. Kind of wild. <laughs> really wild. Play the YouTube for the new age of Win Util. Yeah. Has an SS of the gins. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. And I, I, I went back through when I was making that video, Die Young, and uh, I was going through and I was like, man, uh, in 2020, I, I looked kind of rough. I, it's kind of funny, like looking at myself, I was like, ooh, Chris, you know, watch your diet more, <laughs> um, which I haven't lost any weight compared between then and now. I still weigh the same. It's just a uh, different diet, different exercise, that type of thing. And uh, I, so you see the like the transformation of me and the utility at the same time over the past three years. It was, it was pretty cool. I love that uh, that video. More muscle, less fat. Yeah, 100%. And I feel great. Better than I ever have. All right, let's see what we got. Conti is one of the... He's the original dev behind WinUtil that merged it. Holy... Ooh, okay. Got the Explorer fix, Wi-Fi fix. Oh, this is going to be a big one. This is going to be big. All right. Convert to icon. We got a new file. Looks like uh, function will convert PNG to icon file. All right. That's fine. Uh, localization. That's fine. Looks good. Uh, get OCS. This is one problem a lot of people were having. And I was just like, hey, just run chocolatey, install Windows ADK. It looks like we have that. Um, this one will change a bit because I don't want an executable grabbing from Conti. Conti's one. Never, ever rely on anybody else's repo is the big thing. So that one we will change. What else will we have? Uh, take own accepts. So that's fine. Close button. Yes. Got another Vogue WAPF close. That's great. As far as distribution of OS, C, D, I, M, G, I think it'd be fine. <laughs> I need to do another drunk arch video. That's great. I love looking back at my original videos. So cringe. Been trying Linux for a few weeks now, and I started with Arch. Well, that was a bold. Now I'm trying Nix. Loving every moment. Man, that's so cool. That's so cool, Phoenix. Yeah, Nix, Nix OS is amazing. Do you think you will move the WinUtil tool off of PowerShell script to different language? No, just because I want it all open source. Um, I will make a second version in C Sharp that will utilize the open source nature of it, but I won't move the open source stuff. I want everything always 100% readable, meaning nothing's obfuscated in the code. You don't see any like base 64 garbage or any of that shady stuff you see with a lot of other people doing PowerShell scripts. But I do wanna give something to those that do donate and eventually I wanna get that C Sharp back in that will ingest the open source JSON files and grab the tweaks as I patch them in the open source project and then apply them differently. Instead of using PowerShell, it would use a .NET framework. And that would be not necessarily better, but we could put on a little new spin of it to make it look a little better than what we can do in PowerShell. All right, that's fine. DISM. ISO, image stuff, all good. Write host to from write output, that's fine as well. And removal of this, all right, perfect. Cool, all that looks good. When util will get redone. As far as uh, input XML, I'm sure this looks drastically different. It's not even gonna be able to load it all probably. Oh, there it goes. See if there's anything we're missing. Uh, the problem is I don't know if this got updated. Oh, it's probably gonna wipe out some stuff. 
Oh, there's floor P there. Was session in there? Let's see. What was one of the last ones we submitted? Let's see. I think there was a new one we added. Linphone and Jamie, maybe? No, I don't think so. Linphone and Jamie are there, though. Do you use TrueNAS Scale, Unraid, or Open Vault? Um, I like, I, I really hate Open Open Media Vault. Unraid's okay for it being like a $70 commercial product. TrueNAS Scale, I like probably the most out of those three. For a NAS. Just my, my two cents. That looks good. Uh, all right. Looking at this, I think we're going to... Dang it. Uh, we're going to wipe out some of these past PRs we just committed. Oh, damn it. I hate, 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 hate having to rebase this. Oh, God bless. Just so much okay um that's fine worst case we can always go back and reopen up the pr and resubmit some of the changes most of this is fine though from the look of it it's just changing that osc uh, D dimg which um let's uh let's pull ours in we'll compare hash we'll upload it directly to our github and make sure that that executable is fine. We have to vet everything, though. As much as I like Conti, we got to make sure. DIMG. Can't, does it have a help? Uh, there's that. Uh, where is that in the path? Stage it. Look at commit history. Copy, paste the last stage in Kate Vim. Okay. And then push it yourself. Okay, that's a good idea. All right. Where is OSCDIM? Let's see. Probably the easiest way. Let's just, let's just look on the web for it. Uh, da, da, da. Where are you at? C Windows System 32, I think is what that said. Yeah. All right. We'll double check RC Windows System 32. And then we look for OCSDIMG or OSCDIMG, OSCDIMG. It is not there. Hmm. Oh, why don't they match the CTT logo? That's a pretty good idea, MZO. Mainly, I'm a pretty analytical guy and have no fashion sense. <laughs> is the main reason there. All right, let's go up a directory. Come back to Windows. Let's just search for OCS DIMG here. This isn't here. It's probably in program files. Yeah, everything from void tools would be a far better search tool for sure. What do you use to make the win util PS1 to EXE? Uh, currently, I just use a C sharp project that wraps the PowerShell directly into the executable. But you don't need to do that. If, if you want just a executable file, uh, that you could just use like PS, I think it's like PS2 to executable. There's a little module you can use. The reason why I don't use that module is it flags every single antivirus. It's what a lot of virus makers end up using to convert PowerShell scripts to executables. So that one gets flagged even more than what my current executable gets flagged. And really the only way not to get flagged is to not wrap it in a PowerShell or use PowerShell at all. That's one of the reasons, another reason why I'm doing uh, it, it in uh, .NET and C Sharp because I know that won't get flagged. But I like Defender and stuff. I think we might need to do everything tool. Alrighty. Uh, where's Void Tools? Uh, there it is. All right. Look at that. Windows search, you suck. <laughs> All right, uh, we got it. Uh, got a bunch of different versions of OCSD IMG though. Hmm, what do we got? We got the AMD ARM ARM X86. We we'll probably want this one right here. Let's go properties. Alrighty, compatibility and details. 
All right, we got 146. Let's look at the Conti one as well. See which one he is using. I'm pretty sure he's going to be using AMD 64. All right, where was that? Let's copy it. Go Conti. And what was the exact when util releases? X64 from ADK. 145. That looks to be about right. Choop. Alrighty. Details. Always worth checking, guys. Anytime you see an executable, get the official one directly from Microsoft and do a side by side. Kilobytes do inversioning match up perfectly. Digital signatures. Perfect. Uh, let's see. What, what's his? June 10th, 2023. And mine is March 2022. Well, huh. Signing time's a little different, which is okay, I guess. Uh, we'll use mine. The versioning's the same, though. See? Just a little different. So let's... uh. Let's go here, and we're going to just delete this guy. We'll copy this, and we're going to paste it into our WinUtil. <sighs> Have you considered using Rectify 11? Uh, the thing, I, 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 don't, I like looking at other tools, but I want my tool to be just like a one-stop shop. If there's something some other tool does... I just want to incorporate what it does directly in mine. So then we're not having to go out and download a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, a dev certificate costs, well, it depends on which dev certificate you get. I pay for digital certifications from a base standard, which uh, just, just the basic package of the certificate, meaning I don't submit it to Microsoft for smart screen. And I pay $300 every, I think it's, yeah, I think it's about $300 every three years or something. It's about, it works out, I think, about $100 a year. And then there's the smart screen version, which is the extended digital certification you can buy. And that one is about three times that. And it goes ahead and puts it okay in, in smart. I made a video about it, basically just calling it ransom. <laughs> you know, it's like Microsoft charging ransom for devs just to approve it through smart screen. Um, I don't know. I don't know on that. Uh, to me, I'm just like, hey, I'm going to pay for the basic certification so you know it came from me. But if it gets flagged in your antivirus, I don't give a shit. You know, that's I'm not paying an extra two hundred dollars a year so it can go ahead and, and get the extended Microsoft approved stamp of approval. I think that's just wrong. So I was like, no, I'm just going to give do the basic digital signature. Do you support CompTIA? Yeah. I mean, it, CompTIA, I, I think of like A plus certs and network plus security plus. Um, I don't know if I support them, but you know, I mixed feelings, I guess, uh, because they're, they do have some beginner things for people wanting to get an IT, which I think are great. I honestly, I still think to this day, uh, doing a start for like Network Plus and Security Plus with CompTIA, still some of the best certs to just get a base understanding of those absolutely needed subjects that I think everyone should get if you're doing IT stuff. So to an extent, uh, CompTIA, but I mean, at the same time, it's just a, it's just a, starting point uh i don't want people thinking that you learn stuff with certifications uh i've seen too many paper tigers in my day to put any stock in certifications i think it's just a good starting off point for for those new to it how about htb um what do you mean by htb what's that acronym it's not not clicking up here <laughs> hack the box i don't know i, I don't I, I don't know hack the box i don't think i've messed around with it that much or no no if that is that a youtuber is that a 
Company. Look it up. Hack the box. Okay, let's see. Tra hacking training for the best. Okay. Cyber securing upskilling platform. Okay, cool. That's neat. I mean, there's so many, uh, so many places to learn. I do caution people against thinking they can just take a course online and then learn the stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of a nice way of saying this. Sometimes I don't, uh, sometimes my brain to mouth just happens and I end up, uh, making people mad. Uh, you need experience. And the only way to really get experience when you don't know anything is to set up your own environment and really do it all in that type of thing. Academies and courses may give you some base level of knowledge, but it doesn't mean you can do anything. It means you get general concepts, but I still don't, I, I still would consider you an absolute noob if that's all you've done. Experience is what you need. And to get experience, you need test environments and test labs and that type of thing to figure out this stuff. Nobody can just pick up a book. Nobody can just do a course. Nobody can do an academy and learn what they need to learn. The same goes for school. Uh, I've talked trash about college a lot mainly from an IT perspective. I think college is absolutely worthless. If you want to get into IT, uh, what are you doing? You're just wasting time and money by going into college. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what your goals are. If you want to become a lawyer, an engineer, a doctor, go to college. If you want to waste a ton of money, party a little bit and have rich parents, go to college. If you want to succeed in life, have no debt, and get paid a bunch of money and do an IT career, you should absolutely stay way, way, way away from college. You're not going to learn nearly as much as you could if you just went and learned the stuff and did it, especially here in the States. Now, if you're overseas and it's free and you can do it with, with minimal debt, sure. But too many people these days, I see in their 20s, go to college you get like liberal arts degrees or uh, computer science and spend upwards of 100 up up to probably a quarter million dollars worth of debt and i can learn everything they did in four years probably in under four months except for maybe some of the base stuff maybe they had to take calc or uh comp comp 101 or you know the just the bs stuff but let's not let's not sugarcoat things. I'm so sick. I grew up in an era where people said you're going to be a loser if you don't go to college. And I I say that message just to kind of undo some of that. You need to go experience it. You need to actually put in the stuff and and frankly when it comes to IT, those that can't do teach. <laughs> and, and I know the counter argument there is some people think of me as a teacher and Touche. <laughs> um, but, you know, a lot of times when I am learning, I'm teaching at the same time because I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know what that is. Let me let me go look into it. Oh, that's that's cool. Well, I should make a video about that. Uh, but yeah, that's just my two cents on that. I don't know how I got on that rant, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the thing. The big thing that I probably the sticking point with me and why I, I kind of crap on college, especially in the IT field, is kids are sold a false promise. They're said, hey, you will get a good high paying job if you go get a four year degree in computer science. That's just not true. You can go get a four year degree and suck at coding and computer science, just the whole general gamut. And you're screwed. You have a ton of debt now and you have to pivot to something else and then pay off all that debt. And that's that's just a dang shame because there's some people that have more of an uh, aptitude for those things and some that just don't and they never will. And that's uh, and that's something you, I, I think a lot of people should figure out first before jumping into, you know, a, a course, a 
four-year degree, a lot of the traditional education, it, it can be less than good. <laughs> can you explain the difference between IWR and IRN, but M is what you mean, Muhammad? Uh, which one do you use in general? Um, I can't explain the difference I know, between invoke web request and invoke rest method. Invoke, invoke rest method uses less characters. That's why I ended up using it. Both work for me for downloading a script. I want to say IRM does have some bits dependencies where I think invoke web request doesn't have as many dependencies. So for my purposes, there's not much difference, but I know there's a big difference between the two. I just don't know enough to, to give you a precise uh, difference between the two. Other than the fact IRM uses less characters and you can shorthand things a little bit easier. <laughs> Let's see. All right. What, what was I even doing? I don't know how I got lost here. Uh, I think we're still looking at our, oh, we're looking at this giant pull request. That's right. And we are going to do a commit. Let's just grab when you till. Man, I need to get rid of some of these old branches. All right. Let's go. We were copying this into and submitting this one file, and then we'll reference it. Let's go. GitHub, WinUtil. We'll put that into here. We should see the change pop up. Hmm. I think we might be doing a git ignore of an executable file. Star.exe. All right, we'll update that git ignore and now it should pull in our OSC DIMG. Bam, perfect. We'll commit that, push it. And then we'll reference, change that reference in here. We can just change our GitHub username there. Um, do we do a releases download? I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll just do... Oh, I probably should put that in like a path. Yeah, let's not just drop it in the root folder. Like a heathen. Let's just do a releases. All right, we'll adjust that. I love Cute Browser. Cute Browser is amazing. It's just a lot of websites don't work with Cute Browser. So you, you end up kind of hamstringing yourself. But I love the idea of just using a keyboard to browse the web. So I will always be a proponent of Cute Browser. Let's edit this file. Oh, Thunderbird. Oh my gosh. I never have liked Thunderbird, surprisingly enough. I'm kind of getting away from traditional web clients and, and email. I don't really like email at all much anymore. All right. We're going to be changing that. So we should be able to prove that. And then we'll reserve our conflicts. Oh, geez. This is going to be a lot of conflicts. All right. Yikes. Okay. Um, how do I see? All right. Well, uh, where is... I'm sure there's like a... Oh, temp dir. Oh, gosh. Okay. If we go like control end. Control shift end. No. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, probably the path should probably be more like the releases OSC DIMG. Um, let's see. Oh, you might be right, actually. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look. I'm sure we'll have to fix that OSC DIMG path. 
Oh, jeez. All right. Let's see this one. I wonder if there's just like an accept. I think there would be. Because the problem with my current setup here is I have no... No way of changing this. So like temp DIR. So let's take this. And if we come down to here. Did I miss it? No. Okay. And let's go next. All right. We'll just mark that as resolved. Oh, I just feel like this is the wrong way. I hate doing it this way. I'd love to do this in an IDE. Ah, but such is life. Okay. This one doesn't really matter because we're going to be doing a compile anyways. And if we go next, I wish it skipped to that, but... All right, look for the equal signs to, for separation. <laughs> God bless. Uh, I feel like just saying resolved. Maybe we can just do a find. And if we go next... Oops. Uh, how do you repeat search through GitHub's web, I wonder? Uh, can you? All right, well, at the very least, it'll highlight. Should be getting close to the end here. Good Lord, how big is this? Okay, I feel like we missed it. This looks like the beginning. We did it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, at line... 8,605. <laughs> All right, let's see. Can we uh, expedite this a little bit? Uh, my keyboard, I, I don't have like a setup for control end, control shift end, I think it is, to go to the end of the jot document. Um, probably need to add that, right? Um, let's see. What do we have? Because whenever I shift into my second layer, so here's shift. Where's control? Do we have a control? We do not. Let's go left shift, apply changes, and control, apply changes, change some of the lighting here to white, save. All right, I was like, man, it'd be faster to write this change on my keyboard so I can do this key combination to get to the end of the document. <laughs> All right, control shift and then an end and we should should be good. All right, uh, let's go control shift end. Yay, that was way easier. All right, great. It is it is boxing gloves. It's a very, very cool keyboard. I'm going to do a video about it soon. I love it. All right, so we got lots of fixes here. This is going into our test branch, uh, the OSC DIMG we got a fix still. Let's um, prepare that and see what we have for that merge coming up. How do we grab the old PRs that are going to get wiped out with this? Damn, we should have done this different. Yeah, I think we did a, a couple benchmarks today on stream about the whole uh, WPM words per minute uh, done using monkey type. I think we got like 50 or 60 words per minute, which is about what I average on a regular keyboard. But I definitely I started to pick up some words per minute with the ortho linear layout. Once I get completely adjusted, I imagine I'll pick up probably about 20 words per minute. All right, look at the commit history on the branch. All right, let's squash and merge. Okay, so we merged this big one from Conky. That was a huge PR. And I wanna check out Ashland's one from not too long ago and see if those, those changes made it in. Uh, so if we look, let's go Ashland uh da, 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 nothing okay i probably need to like user ah. let's just go thorium and mercury let's see if thorium and mercury are still there who knows maybe it didn't because i don't know if he oh well the input xaml would be the way to look so let's take this let's fetch and pull down our changes and if we look over here, let's go applications. So the big thing here, oh, 
Big thing here would be Mercury. Mercury's not there, okay. And then he did a ton of XAML fixes. Yeah, see? Mercury and Thorium uh, got back in over here without it going over there. So we need to rebase this file, input XAML from Ashlands with Conti. This is where open source just gets kind of wacky. Dang. Okay, so what's the best way to do this? We got the commit history from the branch. So how do we get that input XAML file rebased over on top of Conti's changes? This is where your mind explodes when doing it. <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay, let's see. So let's take a peek. This one that we just merged, probably Ashland's merge was a big, huge one. Or let's see, it was the last one two hours ago. This one was 52 minutes ago. I think the Steel Series GG would have been the last one. So we look at our file changes, and this is what we need. <laughs> that works directly on live. We test it directly in production here. I think I think the tools light mode gray to work on a dark mode. I think we can. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Nile soft shells already in there. Dextro. So how do we compare this one to the one that's in there? So we view this file. How do we? grab the changes and rebase it. I don't want to rebase the whole thing. That just, yeah, bless. I don't have the middle capacity for that. We could copy it and then grab the, no, I don't know. <sighs> copy, paste the files into ChatBT and ask you to tell the differences. <laughs> it's too big of a file. ChatGPT will error out. So, what if we did a comparison? All right. Let's take all of this. And we're going to go new file input XAML. Uh, we'll just call this one like steel series dot XAML. All right. We're going to paste all our file in here. Then what we're going to do, let's just close all others. Then we're going to take this one and actually, uh, let's just close that. Let's open this to the right. Select a file to merge. This one. Okay. Switch that over here. Can we do like a diff and merge? Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that diff and merge might actually... Ah, yes. Oh, well, okay. Well, close. So... We go here, select a file, this one, no, we're close, we're very close, okay. Um, so let's take this one and let's say diff and merge selected file. So we have SS to, no, oh, that was so close. Good night. Yes, this will fix the Explorer crashing in, uh, in that. Um, Oh, Lordy. Oh, I'm so kicking myself for doing it this way. So this one is our clipboard. So there's that. Okay, great. Fine. Fine. This is going to work out good. This is going to be the dirtiest rebase ever, but... Ah, I mean, not ever. Rebases are always dirty. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right we got all that new formatting new formatting great gravy mercury shoop get that then we have all of these tools oh no okay so we're bringing over falcon chatterino of course ferdium qtox Foss Twitter client and Zulip. Okay. Great. And then for development, we'll grab this one in. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's not the best way of doing it, but I want to kill Conti for freaking moving this stuff up and down. Like, why? Why would you take this and push it down here? Like, document comes after development. Or maybe, oh, that's why he did it. Alphabetical. Oh, no. No, he just, he moved it. He just wanted a document before develop. It's okay. Okay. So, just take this. Control X that. Put it right here. Uh huh. All right. Now, fix this and we'll just do our nice little rebase. Ah, there we go. Internal zero. All right, fine. And then we got to clean all this up and pretty it. So we got that. Jeez. Good night. There was a lot. I'm glad we did this because there was a lot that's uh, missing. And he changed the location. Why? When you're working on a public project, don't freaking move everything around. It makes these freaking rebases like. Oh, God. Ugh. Like, just just an FYI, if you're ever doing a public project and you're trying to help somebody out, don't run like a, hey, let's do a code cleanup. Okay, here you go. Here's a nuke the world commit. Everything changes. All the spacing's off. Everything's in red. It freaking sucks to deal with. <sighs> Yeah, sounds like a pull request that gets denied. Uh, it, if he wasn't working so intricately with the GUI and also micro win, it, it, I would have denied this pull request. Uh, but it's fine. It is fine. We're just going to have to move some of this around. Hopefully this doesn't screw it all up. We're just going to have to do it as best as we can and then fix it after the fact. I'm going to actually leave RBLI out. Open SCAD. Spotify I'm leaving off. Um, grid column three. I feel like we just did this back here. Oh, we added a stack panel and a border. There's just so much. Okay, that's essential tweaks. So we're still on the first tab. I'm just trying to map this out in my mind. Um, so they're doing a border with a grid column, add spacing, makes it look better. Makes sense. So the border and grid column needs to look a little different. <laughs> Push pull the whole thing to prod. Yeah. This is why I have a test branch. <laughs> so inevitably I do screw things up. I can easily get back. Um, so anytime stack panel happens over here, we are now doing a border with a special column. So that makes sense. I think we'll just take this. It's fine. We're going to leave that off. We'll leave those out and the multi WSL Microsoft tools, document label, label. See how this looks. I'm kind of just having a wing this one grid column zero one two three four okay it's not so bad all right we are fine coming back so we have efi bootload boot editor that's cool i have to check that out uh, extra spacing we don't need wire guard x pipe barrier and bat Crystal, disk info and mark, great for benching. DOS box, error lookup. Ah, files, file explorer. Should probably install that myself. This commit really needed another branch, 100%. One, 1,050 million percent. <laughs> oh, God bless. There goes hours of my life. Um, Rain meter. Man, I remember old rain meter. WSL manager. 
think we we got a new section for that anyways and then zoxide all right great 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 oh i guess he's moving the performance lens yeah he moved it down here doing more customization customization with the border and grid columns that looks great yep yep that all looks good all right yep and yep all right great all right, that looks gravy. So what we'll do here is save this. All right, close it. And then when we pull this back up, you'll see we now have all the new ones. Now, let's prettify this a little bit ourselves. Um, what's a, what is that extension? I want to say selection... What is the beautify? I thought I... Do I have that extension in here? Let's see. Prettier code, I think it is, right? Code formatter. Yeah, I already have it. How? What was the command for it? It's, I think prettier should clean up a lot of the problems with our tabs and things like that. Uh, con command shift P should do it. So let's take a peek over here. All right. Command Shift P, uh, Shift Alt F. Actually, Shift Alt F would do it. So let's format document. Uh, I mean, it's not an exact science, is it? Better, maybe. <sighs> yeah, I think it. I think I, I think that's worth it. It's just when you get to some of these wrapping lines. Actually, I think it's fine. But you think like this should be indented a little bit better, right? Just kind of all over the place, isn't it? Yeah, it did a lot of work. Yeah, I think I'm going to just leave that as is. Might need to come back and do some stuff. But I mean, I like it a lot better than what it was. So improvement. Okay. We can discard that change. This one, we're going to update it. Um, I think actually, I don't think I'm going to submit this change right here. Let's go on the web and do this a little bit different way. I kind of want to just take his pull request. Oh no, I already, I already merged his pull request. So this is the way to go. All right, um, another thing I want to kind of do here while we're sitting here, let's just go new terminal. Let's do a compile and also submit that. What do you think about bloaty, noisy, using your tool as an add-on? Are you aware of it? I'm not aware of that, Dextro. I mean, it's all open source, so I mean, people can use it. As long as they credit me, I'm, I'm okay with it when they steal it and go hey it's mine or they steal it try to obfuscate some of the code and hide things in it that's when i have a problem with it because i have seen people try to do some really shady stuff um by stealing it and then trying to do that but it's so such a big tool people are going to know hey you took it from me i think i've had maybe one comment where someone was like hey everyone's making these kinds of scripts now and i was like well I mean, I've been kind of doing it for like four years, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, definitely popular now, which is fine. I think that's all good. All right. I think that's great. Let's run that just to see if it launches because I'm kind of curious. That was a really big commit. So we're on the test. And if we run like win util. Yeah, I kind of figured something shake. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Okay. You cannot call a method on a null valued expression. 8504. And that's going to be a run space. It's going to be almost impossible to find. Shit feel just defeated <sighs> all 
let's look at it let's go to uh, 8504 right oh uh what is it control ship p uh go to what is the go-to line in p of vs code i thought it was just like colon and then you just type right yeah colon 8504 okay it's a xaml error shocker my bastardized xaml broke things oh let's pull in our xaml problems okay yeah we gotta get we could restore from so it's not the worst it's not the end of the world I don't know. I might just have to revert before the Conti commit too. There's just so much going on with that PR that it's just almost impossible to manage. <sighs> All right. Hmm. All right. Let's see here. Null should be on the left side of equality statements. Really? Looks like just a warning to me. The sign never used. The sign never used is initialized in the print. Mandatory parameter OSC diamond is initialized in the pram box. Please leave it uninitialized. What the hell does that mean? Fix it. Ah, okay. But if you do that, it's not gonna. Hmm. How about we do this? Let's just. All right. Let's compile it. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is causing an issue, but let's just take it out just in case. And let's do another compile. All right, great. Let's run this. I think it'll still spit out an error, probably. Yeah, I didn't think that would fix it. So VS Code saying there's an error with the XAML file and the warnings, well... That just didn't didn't help. Goat, I am slowly going insane. You're seeing me just lose my stuff right live here on stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. You know, and there's some days when you... There's some days when you, you're coding and things just snap and everything's great. Some days it's just, you know, one step forward, two steps back. This is kind of like that today so i don't know i don't know uh hey it's fine it is totally fine if we pull this in cannot pull a method on a null valued expression so something is null and spitting that out. What would that be? Icon path, maybe if icon path not equal to null, it's the logic here. So icon path not equal to null set shortcut dot icon location icon path. So it's just saying, hey, is icon path declared? If it is set icon location to icon path uh, which is fine so it just swaps it saying hey if null not equal icon path then do it uh, that's fine I, I don't think that's the error that doesn't that doesn't track for me but hey we can try it real fast just to see yeah I didn't think so it's just a warning yeah, I mean, it's that's just how it goes sometimes. When you get into these huge projects, especially these giant PowerShell scripts, and there's just not very good debugging available for them. It's tricky. It, what makes this so complex is when you get into these huge, huge files and you're dealing with run spaces and threading, it's... It, there's just nothing available that can find errors that make sense. So you kind of have to like guess at it almost. And 
it's just a, a little bit mind numbing for sure. And also some other things like sometimes the cache file, uh, what you can do. This this is also another weird issue that you run into with PowerShell is sometimes it'll do that and then you relaunch it and then you don't run into the, the thing because it just grabs the wrong cache file uh, with PowerShell scripts, large PowerShell scripts. Is Chromium version 117 still safe to use? <sighs> You're going to run into some issues with 117. Why do you still have it in a PowerShell script then? I mean, I'm working on getting C Sharp up and going on it. But for now, I, I really like... The thing I love about PowerShell scripts is it's all right there. And it's very readable to everyone. So everyone can see exactly what's going on in it. Yeah, we already did the compile, so the compile's not it. Let's see? Right, that actually is going to wipe out that null deal, but whatever. It's it's the same thing. Um, Let's see. What else can we do? How do we fix it from here? <laughs> I feel like just saying, hey, today never happened. Let's just revert everything. That's where I'm at. Um. All right, let's look at the error again. You cannot call a method on a null valued expression. If we look at it at 8503. So, let's just go to uh what go to line. What what's the command for file line? Let's see. Control G. 8504 or zero 03 this right here so it's calling all of the xaml file into an xml and saying for each object in ps item name sync the form file name ps item name okay ah doing all right hgh having a little bit of a rough day <laughs> uh appreciate it beaver what would be the easiest solution here? So maybe the name. There must be a malformed name or a name that was declared and then not referenced properly in the XAML file. Maybe there was something that was removed that was left in the XAML file that is no longer there. So it's trying to write out something in here. Maybe, maybe like Mercury and Thorium are left in here into the XAML file. Let's see. So let's say Mercury. Now Mercury is not there. Thorium is not there. Yeah. So those were removed. What else is not? So what I think happened was when we merged the XAML file, one of these checkboxes that are getting declared isn't in our applications JSON and matching up. That's what would make the most sense. How do we cross-reference those without going insane is the next question, which I don't have a great answer to. Oh, God bless. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we do, Goat. Just revert the big commit, merge it that way. Yeah, I agree. Best way to revert the commit. Yeah. It's just too much. Too much going on with this to tackle. And with the as big of a project as it is, it's just... Ah, uh, just too far gone. Let's just discard all that. Oops. All right. That sucks. That just really sucks. Um, <sighs> so when reverting the commit, and let's say we want to say, let's not do any of these. So how would we revert? How would we revert this? My brain is not working today. Probably coming to here. Let's go back to here. Could create the branch from this commit and then just throw that in. 
Hey, how's it going, Sparky? Yeah, I think the best way to do it, revert changes in commit. Let's say we just come here, revert changes, and revert changes. Oh, I don't even know if we can revert those changes. Damn it. Okay. We're just going to call this revert uh, revert 12, 19, 20, Just discard all changes. <sighs> uh, did it not go? Oh, geez. Let me just pull that branch in. Fetch. So if we switch over here now, we come back to here. Let's just do a compile. Make sure this looks good. Man, I'm having a rough day. Rough day for me. All right. Uh, that did not pull in that. It just changed that. Um, Jeez, oh, man. All right, all right. What did I do wrong here? Let's just delete. Delete. Let's come over into the test branch. Fetch. Why do I have a push? What is this? What am I pushing? Undo. Just discard all this. Let's just discard. Come on. Get me back to a clean test branch. All right. Okay. That's okay. At least it's entertaining for people that are watching. Um, you know, we got that going for us. So if we check out the commit, or we, let's say we create a branch from this commit, it should grab all the files prior to this and discard most of this one as well. Okay. Maybe try directly reverting the large commit without reverting the commits after. Okay, let's try that. This is the huge commit. Let's just say revert changes in this commit. Please resolve conflicts and commit the changes. Okay. But we don't... Okay, there's conflicts here. Which... That's fine. Jeez, okay. So it wants me to resolve the conflicts with the input XAML and then also the WinUtil PS1. Man, this is going to take forever to go by hand and resolve these conflicts. I just wish this day never happened. That's that's where I'm at. I'm like literally just about to just nuke it back to where it was. So it, it won't automatically revert these changes because of where it's at. All right, let's clear that out. Better way, better way. What if we create a new branch? Let's just call this like LMMS. What if we take this, does this grab or discard everything before it? Let's just say like we have LMMS um, branch from this commit. Is it gonna grab all that extra crap? And let's say we're on this branch, we come to it. And the answer is, let's just do a recompile. Yeah, no, 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 no. Why? Nope. Let's discard this. That's not what I wanted. Discard. Let's just go back to our test branch. Fetch. We'll discard that, that branch. Delete that. Man, uh, this is a cautionary tale. Okay, get check out the tag and then get clean DF to clean the uncommented stuff. Uh, that'll get you back to a clean checkout and then cherry pick the change you want. So the main issue here that I'm running into, Sparky, is we did this massive commit to the test branch. And when we did this, it, uh, it just, man, it was just such a big commit. I, oh, I shouldn't have taken it. I should have just, uh, no. I need you to re refactor this with uh, some of the PRs we took today. It should have been its own own deal, its own commit, its own branch. So let me let me see. 
Git cherry pick is a powerful command that enables arbitrary Git commits to be picked from reference when working off the head. Because I need to revert all the way back. So we're let's say we're on let's say features the test branch. We did like F and G and it just totally F and G'd everything up. And we need to get back to E before all these new files and stuff were committed in the test branch. So if you go main cherry pick f okay so go to the main branch and then just cherry pick the pull request from there and pull it in that way i think we just dumped this entire test branch it's kind of a good way to do it though sparky i like i like where your head's at on this one so that's the best way to get around this Berg. all right i think that's what we're gonna do so how do we cherry? We can't really cherry pick from our GUI. We're just gonna have to use CLI. That's fine. It's fine. This is gonna be a neat lesson. A very neat lesson of what not to do. <laughs> uh, I know I'm learning a lot right now. I like this cherry pick command. So that's cool. We're gonna take the main branch. Uh, we will... Uh, just go and create us a new branch. We're gonna call this test. We should call it unf things. Twelve. Oh, let's go. Actually, our test branches are usually year 2023, 12, 19. So we're gonna create this branch. Alright, perfect. So we've created a new branch. If we refresh, you'll see the new branch, which is obviously gonna work. We'll get get us back into a, a a proper test branch now let's just double check that things are working which they should be obviously if i'm just just oof. all right yeah so this is working of course now do we have git yeah we got git we can do our cherry pick and just put the commit number and cherry pick the PR and redo this. Whew, this is cool. Learning different ways of unscrewing things up here. Like I said, I owe you one there, Sparky. Well, I'd probably owe you 50 by now, but um, I like I liked the methodology here. So what, what we're doing now is, since we've screwed everything up, or I've screwed everything up, what we've done is we have main branch. We we had all this right here, and this was all test. CDNF didn't really happen. So we've been working on test, and I just screwed up test monumentally by just grabbing too many PRs that were too big and causing all kinds of problems. So we were like, okay, I went back to B and said, hey, we're going to create a new test branch and just call it C based on B. But then we still have all these PRs. What do we do? And I think what we'll do is just grab the PRs we like, merge those all in, and then we'll have that as a separate commit as main. And then we're gonna take uh, the big PR from Conti. Well, maybe we take the big PR first and then do all the other BS after. I kinda wanna just see if this works first in understanding Git Cherry Pick. Cause when we do the Git Cherry Pick, we should be able to do git cherry pick and then the commit number, uh, the commit SHA right here to grab those changes. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so from here, we're going to do a git cherry pick let's first start small and just make sure cherry pick works because it's the first time i've ever run it didn't even know this command existed but it does look mighty awesome so we'll go to our test branch now and look at these commits that screwed everything up <clears throat> and then we'll grab something let's grab a small commit like uh steel series right here this was a pretty small commit and if we look, here's the commit details. 
And what we need to do is just grab the commit SHA number, which is this number right, right here. So we'll grab it. And we could also grab it from over here as well. If we just look at history and say, Hey, we want to grab that and pull it in, which would be where, where do we start today? All the way over here. Okay. So then just get cherry, uh, cherry pick. What was that uh, syntax? Cherry dash pick and then the SHA. Oh, okay. GitHub Desktop has cherry picking on the right click menu of the commit list. Oh, it does? So we're on this one. How do I get over to the other branch? Oh. So if we wanted, we could cherry pick like this giant one right here. Let's just cherry pick this. We copy the SHA, but where's the cherry pick command from this guy? Don't copy the SHA, right click the menu. So here's the commit right here, cherry pick commit. Oh, here we go. Cherry pick one commit to a branch. And let's say we want to push it to 12, 19 from and to the same branch. Well, it's not, that's, that's a different branch. 12, 19 is come, it's based off of main right yeah okay yeah that's all right oh i'm cherry picking to main okay so how do i cherry pick to a branch okay so current branch is 1219 and oh so you need to actually refresh this branch get over to here and say hey i want to take this and then say hey cherry pick it push it to 1219 right here and this will create a whole new branch with just this commit. So let's just do that. Perfect. Resolve conflicts before cherry pick. Fine. Let's just accept incoming change. Was there another change that needed to happen? Nope. Okay, great. Open in Visual Studio. Accept incoming change. Fine. Open. And we will accept incoming change. Something went wrong. Great. Well, all right. Try that one more time. Something went wrong. Son of a. All right. We had some authentication errors or something. Mm hmm. Great. Let's just scroll down, maybe. Accept incoming change. Accept incoming change. Accept incoming change. Great. Great. So now we can continue the cherry pick. Awesome. So now we've only grabbed the Conti pull, pull request from that. We've cherry picked it directly into our new test branch of 1219. So now if we over here, we do the compile. Just make sure we're working on a clean win util. And then we do the win util. We see the new outline border and Conti effects here, which are gravy. Perfect. So this is good. Now let's see if we can cherry pick the other ones directly into this branch without breaking things. That's kind of cool. That's very, very clean. Okay. Little. Twitch chat say Sparky man save the day. Okay, now now we can cherry pick the next couple commits. And geez, we still have all those open PRs. Shit. This is gonna turn into like a seven hour stream of unscrewing things up and also getting our PRs done. Which it should have been like an hour long stream. Oh well. You know what? Edutainment is really what this is about. You can laugh at me all you want. I can hear the comments already, but that's okay. So now let's go back to our 11.13. Oh, no, no, no. Let's uh, commit these changes. We're doing an update. Commit, push. All right, so 12.19's all buttoned up with that big commit. Now we're flipping back to the 11.13 or 11.30. Let's grab some of those other PRs such as this one let's cherry pick it 
and push it over to 1219 now. It's just a baby commit. Open. And I wonder if we could just accept both changes. Um, let's just discard the change here on this one because we'll just recompile a win util. So it doesn't really matter uh, because it's just too much to look at. So I'm just going to say whatever, accept the current change, and then we'll do a compile after. So we'll say that. It'll fix that. Now, this is where it gets tricky because these changes are going to be enough to break VS Code. Okay, great. So then we have all of these. So here's the incoming change. Compare the changes. Mm-hmm. So here's the current, and this is the incoming. Right here's the incoming. This is the current. Okay. Because of the reorder of all the stuff, it's just not quite gonna grab what I need, huh? So how do we fix it? So here's this one. It's all green. Advanced tweaks. Okay. All right, all right, here we go. So, so current tweaks. We have the O and O right there. And then all of a sudden, it just adds in all of this right here. This installs completely wrong. This. This is all wrong because this is another tab where like chatterino discord all that communication stuff should be up here under communications why would it drop it there so communications right here so this is where it should be but this commit has all this crap right here like that would totally break things it's no bueno so to fix this, it's because of, see, this is where like the pretty tool, like where you change like the indenting completely screws up all pull requests because now all the, it, it just doesn't, it's not able to see the differences because of the spacing and, and the printing of the code. Lord have mercy. So really the, the fix here would be Really, the true fix would just be grabbing what you need and dumping the rest. So looking at this, there should be a accept commits, right? Or current changes. So this is what we have. Um, we wouldn't want to accept this. So we'll just say accept current change and discard all that. But we need to look at what exactly is... Uh, what exactly is cherry picked? Because it's, it, I, I think it grabs some of that. We, yeah, I think we abort. It's an abort. At this point in time, we got to look at the pull requests and say, are there's just so much differences between the two? There's too too big of a diff that we need to make sure that the, you just take the less work of the pull requests. Obviously, the Conti commit was huge. Refactoring it and then just saying, hey, guys, sorry. If you want to redo the work, you can, but we can't accept the pull request. Otherwise, I just have to rewrite all their commits uh, or all their pull requests for all the new applications. And I think at this point in time, I don't want to. Ugh. <laughs> well that's the thing yeah that's the thing about this is you got to uh well if we just want to accept the application commits and those prs we could but since taking the other big commit which does fix a lot of things especially with micro win from conti i like that commit it's a huge commit but having both of those with 
a huge with with a big enough different code base that it's almost impossible to merge them properly on t one on top of each other as we saw with this this cherry pick and you know it's just the way it goes sometimes um that sucks yeah so nano that's the thing i think conti is a little inexperienced with github as well because his pull request didn't have nearly the right commits in it either so that's where i was like ah accepting a pull request with a little bit outdated code uh, means i have to go make sure they're all it's basically rebasing these two separate branches together which rebasing sucks that's why a lot of people, I think on GitHub, especially these big public projects, they're just like, screw it. I'm not accepting any pull requests. But I mean, I still appreciate it, all, all the people that contribute the pull requests. It's just I hate having to choose between a lot of the commits when when I let it go longer in a week. It's just we got so many pull requests just in one week's time that it was really difficult to to pick it. So, you know, obviously Steel, Steel Series didn't make the cut. Uh, I was just I was using this as an example just to see if how we can cherry pick, but uh, at this time, if we look at the test branch, let's see what we could grab from the test branch first, and see what we got. So we started the day out with a Steel Series, I think. Oh no no no, we didn't. We started the day out right here with Ashland's commit. And then we did monks remove thorium and mercury commit. All right, so let's just do that. I'm just gonna do these commits manually because we just have such a different base that it's it's worthwhile. All right, let's just close all, have a nice clean start, and we'll grab our XAML, and we're gonna just get rid of thorium and mercury real fast. Oh, that sucks, Sparky. Whew. Yeah, I think that's what we can do, Whisper. It's whether or not I want to do the work or have them do the work. If they'll do the work, great. But uh, if not, some of these are smaller commits where it's like, ah, it's not a big deal. For me to ask and get a response, it's best I just go back through and say, hey, let's just fix it and uh, call it good, right? Because, like, removing some of the stuff is actually pretty simple. So let's say we want to get rid of mercury and thorium. We just take this. Uh, mercury and thorium are right here. Now, I could go through applications and zap those. But I kind of want to just remove them from, from the GUI right now. Maybe that dev cleans up his act and more contributions come to it. And I'll put it back on the tool. Great. If that were the case... I might add it back in and leaving in the applications JSON doesn't really hurt anything. So this, this commit would actually be pretty easy to do. We'll just do this and a compile, right? And if we go win util and you'll see we don't have mercury or thorium anymore. And with that, we got, okay, this one's good. Remove Merc and thorium commit push next pull request we look at our history oh those are the old ones okay yeah it's not going to show right here unless i switch our branch which i'm not going to do we'll just go back here so we got that one done um we got lmss i don't really care about all these programs i know ashlyn and them Man, look at all these programs they added. Oh, it would have been nice to grab this. Maybe we still can cherry pick this a little bit, right? So the application's JSON. Let's try to cherry pick this file because I don't think it's really that much. And I might, hmm, instead of doing a cherry pick because the code base is so different, let's do it a different way. Let's just grab the raw file. <laughs> I love Ashley though. I, I think that's I think that's the way to go. Yeah, I think we can cherry pick a, some of them. It's just uh, getting this ready. 
So what I'm going to do with this one is just view the file, copy the raw text, right? Come back into here and say, hey, let's grab that applications JSON, but I want to do a diff and compare the file from my clipboard. And then what I can do from here is just add them in. And we got copy Q right here, but I think what we did, if we look, I think after clone hero and copy Q there, so we'll wipe out copy Q there, put it right here. We're just going to go through and add them just kind of manually, not a whole like redoing all the work. So we're able to still use the work and get all of our programs added from Ashland because I don't, Ashland worked hard to get these programs put in and I don't want all that work to be lost. So we're just going to add all that. Goodbye, Mercury, MS Paint, NeoFetch Win, InMap. Oh, I didn't know there's a NeoFetch in Windows. That's cool. Makes sense. Grab those files. All right. There's a, see, there's a lot of programs. I was like, oh, man. Get rid of Thorium and grab some of these WSL files. Great. Right. Very easy. Now we are gravy. Perfect. And we can get rid of this line down here. Awesome. Save it and close. So applications are now fixed. We got all these new ones in there. And then let's see how this looks. I think if we copy the XAML, this is where things are just going to go off the rails. And we can easily just dump it from the clipboard without having to do the cherry pick routine. So what we'll do is go to XAML input. We're going to copy this file. And we're going to try to do a compare. But I think the compare is just going to get all kinds of jacked up. Yeah. So let's come down. And this is border, border, okay. Sea of red and green, right? And this is where I think we can kind of just pick and choose and say, okay, I want the Falcon. And we got to fix some of the indenting along the way. Chatterino. Ferdium. Do you guys know what Ferdium is? I think that's like another communications app of some sort. I lose track of how many open source communication apps come in. And we got a FOSS Twitter client and Zulip. Then this is what got swapped, which is fine. We're not going to grab that just yet. Vagrant. All right. In yarn. All right, so Anki, uh, was there anything in here? Naps 2, maybe? And PDF Sam and Zernal Zim Zerto. Okay. Yeesh. So for this one, I think what we're going to grab, so we're just going to grab all these, copy, and paste it. Oops. Hmm. I wonder if I could just delete these and then put them below. I feel like that's probably the way to go because I don't like document being above development. Kind of bugs me. Then we'll just add this in and we'll take this and do a shift tab. Correct it. Great. And we got the border slash that it comes into column two and we get back to adding. Emulation station. There we go. I know it's a little annoying, but that's okay. WSL tools. What are the chances of me screwing this up? I don't know. Pretty high, probably. Library, we're not going to skip. Spotify, we're going to skip. WireGuard. All right, love me some wire guard. Um, we only want to grab really the X pipe. The rest of this is no good. Take that. Grab that. Tedious is what I'd call this. 
but worth it. It's good. Rain meter. And the rest, I think we're good. Um, yeah. See, there's just so much, so much going on with this XAML file. There's just no way for it to automatically rectify that. So now if we close out of here, we now have all of Ashland's commits um, right here. You can see a very, very clean way of adding all these programs. There's just so many programs. So Ashland programs. Um, let's do another compile real fast. Okay. And let's make sure it works. Son of a biscuit eater. What happened? Ah, same thing. Dang it. Oof. See, I knew I knew to test it before doing the good get and push. Oh, what did I do? Dang it. The XAML file should be created, generated by other means. Makes it far easier to... Yeah. Maybe like a compile or something. Okay. So let's go through here. Something happened with the XAML file that broke things. What did I do? So let's see if anybody's eagle-eyed enough to figure it out. I'm just going to look for green and red lines. Where did I go wrong? Do you think maybe, maybe I didn't add the right ones under checkbox name. Maybe something in here doesn't have a corresponding applications.json. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Do a JSON file to generate the XAML would be way better. 100%. Then, then we will only it'd be make it really easy to add programs as well. As you see, we're definitely adding a lot. And I, I think what's happened is there's something in here that isn't over here. So when we're looking at this, like we have install arch, but is there an, let's see, what else do we have? What was added in the input? Do we have an Anki? Yeah, so we have Anki, Adobe, OpenOffice. So there must be some kind of checkbox that exists in the XAML that doesn't exist in the application JSON and is causing this, this error. I think you're missing the closing in stack panel. So let's look for stack panel. So we have a checkbox here. We're erasing label content right here. Okay, so starting at the top, this is the very beginning changes. We're adding just checkboxes. Yep, yep, yep. Labels and checkboxes. Perfect, this is removing, this is adding. No stack panel or border changes, so that's fine. Removing a lot of labels, checkboxes, checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. Okay, labels. There's a stack panel, more checkboxes, checkboxes, label checkbox. Ah, right here. This change to stack panel could be where we went wrong. Let's look at the stack panel on the prior commit. So let's, let's go back. Um, Let's go back to my pull request. Let's come over to Conti's version of it. And we'll look at the XAML file here. And right here, let's open it up. Let's just view the file. And we'll just zoom down. Here we go. So we have border that and then stack panel. And here's the document. We have border stack panel, border grid row and column. So border row one, grid one, row one, column zero, row one, column one, row one, column two. Ah, uh, I see what happened. 
No, yeah, I definitely don't recommend Thorium as your base browser now. For sure. So the stack panel here, this border needs to be like this. And this should be column three, probably. Yeah, this should be column three. And then this one will be column four. Ah, uh, actually, let's just remove this all together. I think we honestly, I think this is what showed up the air before we did the cherry picking. I think that's really what happened. Netscape's the best. Highly recommend it. Nothing ever beats that iconic gif of the stars falling in front of that in logo. I can see it just like it was yesterday. Okay. All right. I think we do a compile. So this is what we got for there. And then we do a win util. It'll launch now. Yes. So the utilities here, man, the utilities just got so big. I see why. Man, look at that. Um, we need to split that up a little bit, huh? Damn. Uh, we'll take multimedia and put that over with pro and then take the utilities, make it its own column. I mean, that's basically all we can do, right? Yeah, I think so. But man, that utilities column's going to be massive. I see why you wanted to split it up. I see why this all happened like this. <sighs> all righty. We'll take multimedia tools. All righty. And then we'll take this guy just like that. We're going to take utilities and I think that should fix it. Uh, I mean, it's still not going to be super pretty, but it's going to look better. It's going to work. Okay, well, you're going to let me type there. All right, a little better. Utilities is still definitely long in the tooth there, but with all these extra things, I mean, what can you do? I mean, it's it's getting to be kind of a massive list. Uh, so be it. I like it. Um, so we have that. Could you make tabs under the install, etc.? So you click on the utilities and it only shows them apps and programs. Um, I'm not sure what you mean there, gaming. So if you could not make tabs under the install, etc., it only shows them. Yeah. Okay. Well, that looks good. So we got, uh, we've got that in now. What was the other one from earlier? It's a little bit of a dirty way to do it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, geez, I guess grab some of these other ones in too. At this point, I kind of want to just dump all the other commits. Is there anything worthwhile? I don't really care about like one or two programs here and there. I just wanted to get, I just wanted to get the big ones. Like, I know Ashley worked really hard on that one. I want to make sure that went through. Better birds. Inject drivers into boot. Ooh, what's that? Oh, that looks good. I thought we could cherry pick 1291. That looks like a pretty simplistic one. Uh, let's cherry pick 1291 into here. Um, let's do a commit. And push. We'll switch over to our old branch. Let's grab uh, the 1291 and cherry pick it, uh, which we don't have in our history. So we should be able to go into PRs, pull requests. And I think we can just take this and just say, hey, cherry pick the commit, toss it over on 1219. Cherry pick it. And then if we look over on 1219, we have that one. Fetch. And that just adds this section. Let's do a compile and test. Get status. Look at what is there. Should just see when you till and then also see a change to the other one. When you till. 
And looking at micro win, it should be good to go. All right, great. Just double checking to make sure that cherry pick did come in. Let's find that file, track it down. All right, inject drivers under invoke micro win. Let's look at that. Under invoke micro win. I don't think it was actually right here. It might have been a private one. Uh, inject. Hmm. All right, let's just do a... Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay, so that did that did come through. Great. And there it is. And we're going to copy... New branch, commit, and push. All right, any other PRs we need to rescue? Uh, Steven Gamer, I've already looked at. We're going to have to close these out. And then Better Bird, which who cares? Uh, yeah, Better Bird. Another Discord app or Twitter app or probably. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, we're just going to close all these pull requests, kill this branch off, and then... Bro, we're walking away from this nuclear disaster of a live stream I've done today uh, and just calling it junk. Ugh. Close. This was a... There was a bunch of changes in here. I was like, ah, maybe... Did new changes since you last viewed? Oh, okay. Uh, I did make some changes. What was the changes on this one? I know Steven made some changes here. He made it in win util, so it doesn't really match. What was the full changes on the actual PR? Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't I don't want to accept it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this one as well. Let's kill this branch before it just gives me a heartache. Heart attack. All right, let's just get rid of the pre micro win. We can trash it. We're going to trash the old branch. And then we're just going to have 1219. Bro, that was that was the most roundabout way of doing the PRs I've ever done. Lots learned, learned the cherry pick command. Amazing. But man. That's something. Yeah, it's not. We haven't merged main yet, so main is still on the old version. Let's. Uh, we're, we're gonna just do one more compile. Get. Make sure we got our pull. Doing everything's clean, already up to date, and when you till. Everything looks good. We've got the new setup here. Great. Tweaks, minor fixes, a lot of micro win fixes, a lot more apps. Uh, from Ashlyn that we merged in and we're good man was that a headache uh nothing on here now let's just do a comparison and do a pr for 1219 uh addition create pull request and a review is required. Uh, yep, 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 yep. All right, yep, that looks great. I can't approve my own thing, so we're just going to squash and merge, call it a day. Oh, we got to fix unit testing too. So it's just going to fail. Yeah, still, maybe next stream we'll do unit testing. This is just a bit of a nightmare. All right, squash and merge. Uh, let's see how that goes. Um, I think we'll uh, leave it there. Uh, I guess we can delete the branch. But we pushed it live. Okay, so we got everything done on the pull requests. The branches merged. A lot of micro win fixes. A lot of program additions. Uh, prettying up a lot of the code. Jeez, my worst stream yet. <laughs> uh, yes, we tested it extensively. Uh, we tested it a lot. Uh, thank God for test branches and uh, learning about cherry picking from Git. Very nice. A lot of rebasing. 
I mean, knowledge of rebasing helped a lot. I still, I still would like a lot of the differences in comparing and creating pull requests directly in GitHub would be nice. I feel like the best way to look at the PRs themselves is to grab them from in here. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to main branch. Uh, let's go here. What do, what do we got? Pull origin. I wonder what it's trying to push. I don't see any changes. I guess it's maybe just pushing some history. I'm not sure what what's happening here. Do a compile when you tell. Okay, it's all working. Why is it having me push? Branch is ahead of by three commits. Okay. I think we're good. Let's push it. I, I guess we'll just push just to make sure we're all up to date and everything's fine. All right, I don't see any issue here. We have when you till. We have our branches. I'm going to go ahead and delete the old branch. We'll just go ahead and delete that guy. And then everything should be nice and live. Um, I guess you can check at it now if we do like a IRM. Sometimes this takes a long time on my system before it actually updates. So I, so yeah. Yeah, no, it's already updated. Yep. So we're good. Let's go desktop, run tweaks. Well, I want to just check to make sure everything's gravy before I do a test branch. The worst thing is when something's broken on main and you already have a test branch with like more PRs and commits and you're like, ah, oh, crap. All right, so now I got to rebase the test branch based on the commits over here on the main because I had to push that live before everything blew up. So sometimes that happens. I guess we'll just create a test branch and if something goes wrong, we'll just change it on the test branch, do a test and then merge it back to main. Um, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, let's, let's go ahead and create a new test branch. We'll call it 1220. Shoot. That was a very, very special outing. We got there. We got there in the end. Toretto was not checked by default. Still want to do some changes with Toretto because I'm noticing noticeable connection issues every once in a while. It's not like anything big. You like refresh and it'll just pull up. But there's times where it wants to default to IPv4 when it should just use IPv6. And I think I think we need to change that. Frankly, let's just let's just merge before we create the test branch. I'm gonna just go ahead and fix that. Um, what was that? Where was that tweak at? Was it uh, Toretto? What was that called? Toretto? I thought it was Toretto. Okay, where's that at then? So if we look at the tweaks, let's do Control F. Actually, let's not do a control shift F. Let's just control F over here. Toretto network. What was that called? Ah, oh, geez. It's not Toretto tunnel. No network. Nope. Where the hell's that tweak at? Tunneling? Okay. Where are you at? Okay, here's IPv6, that's fine. Well, it should be calling it directly from that input XAML file, right? So here's this one, and then you got WPF being searched. So it, it's calling this subroutine from here. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> when Conti committed this one, he wiped out my last commit. Oh, bro, I think I might have to just stop accepting a lot of these commits. They're just, they're just so far behind when I'm doing the working on the project. It's like the PRs need to be smaller. Shiitake mushrooms. All right. Okay. Well, that's fine. Like I said, at least it's all in GitHub. It's, it's not the end of the world. I still appreciate the, the stuff. It's just just makes my life a lot more difficult is all um shh. 
Now, if we look at this one, can we look at the history? Where was that? Uh, there was a removal of hard-coded services. Did this also not make it in? I bet you. Let's take a peek. If this got reverted as well, I'm just going to freaking scream. I, it's really easy to check. Okay, good. Okay, this, this made it through. Okay, good. I was about to just flip out. All right. Lose my stuff. So then, where's my Toretto tweaks? Right here. That's okay. I still wanted to switch this around. All good. So we got Toretto tweaks here. For some odd reason, the tweaks thought this didn't grab it. It says it was above Bing. So if we look at the tweaks, right? It's Bing towards the bottom here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, okay, it made it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't see. Um, disabled components under IPv6. I want to say we need to look at this uh, because I wanted to change it to just say don't allow uh, components for the tunneling. So prefer IPv4 over IPv6 is a decimal of 32. We don't want that. Disable IPv6 on all tunnel devices, decimal one. So really what we want is we want to make sure we're not using IPv6 tunneling because that adds extra latency. It's okay to do non-tunneled IPv6 because that means IPv6 is actually properly instituted and it's not doing this conversion from IPv4 to IPv6. So this tweak should technically be one instead of 32. All right, perfect. So what we'll do is do a compile, do win util. All right, well, well what I do? Oh, <laughs> I'm on the wrong branch. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Just a second. Okay, I'm better. I'm better. Okay. <sighs> Dangerous CO2 levels. I got it right here. We're still in the green. <sighs> it's okay. <laughs> so there was the Toretto tweak we did. Then there was also the fixes for the hard coding GUIs. Switch to the main branch. Um, we're going to leave all those changes. We're on the main branch. Everything's up to date. We look back over here. You'll notice that the Toretto tweaks aren't there. You'll also notice that all the GUI IDs were not updated as well because someone was working off of an old branch never bothered to update before doing his PR. That's okay. So we're just gonna, just gonna do that. Ma, ah, look, fixed. Mm -hmm. All right, do another compile. Let's do another test. Go tweaks, we go Toretto, we're gonna run those tweaks. That's perfect. Um, so what we're gonna do is bring in and we'll document this properly by going to our pull requests. Actually, let's, let's just go here. And if we look at all the old branches, which I deleted, is it's not like deleting things you would see that there is uh, stuff there. So um, I don't know what commit those were, but we're just gonna say bringing in old commits. I don't really care at this point. People can just imagine what those commits were. And we're done. We're done. Yes. Ah, uh, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal.
So I, I think we, we lesson learned today is make sure that you stay on top of pull requests. And if you do accept a pull request, make sure it's grabbing your old commits. Um, and they're not working off of really old code. <sighs> that was just super aggravating. And now I got to look back through all that code. I got to change things too on this. <sighs> all right, we get it. Yeah, frustration. And I think it was just part of coding. Like, you have good days and bad days. Today was a, an interesting day, but, you know, I always say you learn stuff by failing. We learned a lot about cherry picking. I know I did. And uh, rebasing. Man, a lot of rebasing happening. That was wild. And then just kind of seeing uh, some of the, the old history here uh, flipping through. Uh, these old branches still have like a local cache and it was kind of nice looking through here. I, I just want to take a peek here at some of the stuff like Karnak and IMG Burn. Did that make it in? Because that was 14. That was two weeks ago. And InMap. Did InMap and the IMG Burn and Karnak make it all in? It it's just I don't know when and this is my bad i guess for not checking on this pr and seeing when they pulled it so um let's take a peek let's let's just make sure in maps here yeah in maps there and that's good okay so we got that so this is just a couple weeks old just missed a couple minor commits um and the the pr is only like four or five days old i want to say so maybe it was just something uh, a quick oversight. Uh, tail scale. Let's make sure on that. I just really want to make sure we got it all. Tail scale. Yeah, it's all there. So we're good. Man. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Cool. And MMAPs there. All right. Great. Yeah. Read the pull request very, very uh, thoroughly. And I think that just some of it was just the flipping back and forth between branches and i i think we just grabbed a little too much on one of them where it wiped out a couple days but that was okay i mean we still had the history and i could easily go back and grab those commits and and rewind things and and still not lose any of the work that people did or what i did uh it's just ooh, a little bit of a brutal couple hour waste just because of uh not looking at it doing it properly uh, but that's okay. It, just a bit of a pain. And uh, the beauty of Git is at least we had the ability to look at all of our history. Because, man, this could have... Just imagine if you you were, like, trying to go between restore this version um, and, and all those few things. It was really neat that we were able to just be like, hey, I see everything in this version that was a rebase from this test branch. But I only want to grab, like, half of that file and leave the rest there. And then being able to do diff diff merge, which was neat, which I hadn't used before, just from the clipboard, and then just saying, you know what, I only grab these lines, and then just leave everything else. Uh, so it it really made the rebase a lot better and and much it was much faster than I thought it was possible. So that was that was fantastic. Uh, it just ooh, all right. So back on the main branch, everything looks good, and uh, yeah. Oh, we weren't on main, were we? Oh, yeah, let, let's just make sure in-map's over on main. Yeah, we got in-map. I was like, oh, boy. Tail scale was another one. Yeah, okay. We're good. And I'm just going to relaunch it one last time just to make doubly sure I didn't uh, miss anything here. Oh, boy. So, oh, let's close that. So, we got... Uh, Tail scale, uh, tail, tail scale, in map, yeah, sweet. All of it looks great. Oh man, it's so much better. Okay, if you click on a tab, for example, browsers, it only gives shows what browsers are there. So each tab only shows each app and program that is in that section. Oops. 
Um, I'm not sure. Oh, you want that functionality. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, I think uh, last time I checked, we were getting like, I think it was like two or 3,000 redirects a day from just uh, christitus.com slash win. So, I mean, technically, if there was something in there, it would be it would be bad. It, would, it definitely would affect a lot of, a lot, a lot of computers. Um, one other thing, too, before we create the test branch, looking at this, there was that OSCDIM that I wanted to make sure was there did this get the did, is this an actual valid link that was the other thing i wanted to double check because i don't know if this is let's check uh, we need to check it um because i'm not 100 percent that's gonna work see i knew it i just knew it um I really don't want to mess around with this anymore today. So what we're going to do is fix that real quick. What's the best way to do it? Uh, probably making a releases and was that everything search? Ah, let's go OSC DIM MDG and It'd be this guy right here, AMD64, there it is. Let's copy it. Let's upload it into our releases. Check that, push it. We'll just grab the raw. It's not in the main branch, yeah. So what we'll do, come on. Ah, you know what? It's ignoring it. That's what's happening. So let's just come over here. Get ignore. Remove executables. Then we should have OSDC day I am. Upload. Push. Great. And we're going to grab that from the release tab. Let's do a refresh. Releases, OSC day I am, raw file, um, copy link, come back over to here. We're just going to get rid of this. All right. So now we should have the proper download URL of that and fix. Yeah. good enough and now let's create a test branch we now have all of that in we have the proper osc dimg we verified it it's directly from windows adk and we can just sign off on that we're not linking to anybody as repo and yeah i think that's good can you make uh, the window download windows 11 in micro in a hyperlink Ooh. Yeah. Well, how about this, King Root? What if... I'm just spitballing here. What if we just launch Explorer as that download directory instead of saying this is where the uh, ISO is? That'd also be doable. So let's say... If we look at MicroWin. Uh, I think it's under Invoke MicroWin. Let's see... Micro win helper. I think it was towards the end of this. Uh, I think actually Conti already did this. Oh no. Hmm. Not that. Where, where did that go? Ah, here we go. So probably the best way to do this, we could do like an execute of uh, Explorer at that specific directory. So something like this would, uh, here, let me just show you what the command we'd run. So you could do like Explorer and then um, do like a temp, which temp under this syntax should be a percent sign temp, a percent sign. So something like 
temp in that context it bring up the micro win directly so then you just stare right at wh where it is and it grab the temp file uh, we can also put micro win in a different directly altogether um, instead of temp um, that's up to you I mean what do you think so instead of a hyperlink it's just opening up the the temp folder where it's located oh the steam year review I mean a lot of it Tommy is from Steam Deck so my Steam Deck's probably about 50% of my usage. Well, actually, I've been playing a ton of Age of Empires 4, and I've been using Windows a lot more. So the percentage is skewed towards Windows probably, too. I'd be curious to see what it ends up being. Yeah, I thought about that gaming. Uh, I like the search box we have now. So if you're searching for a specific thing, you could easily just get to it. I think that's fine, too. <laughs> Most of my game time's on Battle.net. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, all righty. Well, this was fun. Yeah, but I think if we wanted to launch into like Explorer, we could just do like an Explorer environment temp or do like a start process and then just launch right into it. Um, as far as making this spit out a hyperlink, not really capable of doing that because you're, you're spitting it out into PowerShell. So what we can do is like just direct you to a folder or create a whole new folder and um just open up that one folder with the file in it i think honestly making like a micro win directory in temp and then just opening up that temp file when it's finished creating would probably be the best solution out of all this oh okay just download windows 11 and not show the iso make oh okay i got gotcha. you yeah 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 i got what you're saying so when you're launching hmm okay sorry i was thinking of the make so when you're here and you're here you want this you want to be able to just click on microsoft windows um we can do that best way to do that hmm probably a button or changing well hmm let's see make hyperlink in xaml let's see if we can do that i think we can that one second all right let's go um make all right hyperlink navigation uri all right should be pretty straightforward we do need to add a hyperlink hand an event handler for it for the hyperlink click all right so let's oh let's let's actually uh, make a new branch before we get too crazy here so we're on the main branch right now everything's gravy love it well, let's do this before i end up breaking something else today i have broken up way too much stuff i am ready to just say no more breaking all right, test. Uh, 20, 23, 12, 20. Create that. Refresh. We got our new branch. And we're switching it over here. There we go. There we go. We're, we got that going. We'll just switch from here with the test. 12, 20 and let's do a hyperlink with our xaml this is a text block hmm best way i think we can still throw it in a text block let's make sure we can can i add okay so there's the text block right there no okay we're fine we're fine so we're just going to grab this hyperlink good enough and then we just need to grab the hyperlink link let's fix that um the event handler so when we load xaml content we need to add an event handler uh xaml reader window equals xaml reader let's look where that's at in our file xaml reader all right so we got try catch right here 
load XAML reader. And then we store the forms, but we also need to make sure. Hmm. Because of we're doing it in a run space, we need to make sure we change that too. Yeah, it's always something simple like a link that really screws you up, huh? <laughs> it always seems like that. Um, window equals load reader. I kind of want to just give it this. Let's see what uh, chat GPT says. Let's see what, uh, what it says. All right. Submit. Where, oh, where are you going to put this? Chat GPT? Well, that's not right. So we got this kind of code, which I don't think is really changing anything. The weird thing is. I want to say we do it through a sync event right in here. Like sync form, and I want to say it would add right in here. I just hmm. like this. No, that's not gonna work. Hyperlink reader. What are you doing? All right. Well, it's always the simple stuff that's hard. It just is. Um, standard property. So we got button, toggle button, checkbox. I want to say we need to do a sync on this namespace for a hyperlink and then expand it out that way for the property. That's what I'm, that's what my brain's telling me, but I don't know if that's right or not. Let's see what the show dialogue looks like. So we're reading all that in. We got this down here. We're doing that, spitting all this out, and then towards the end here, it should say, hey, show dialog right here. So it's a sync form show dialog right there. And what I think this should be is a sync form, um, but I think it would be the hyperlink. So if we look, I wish I could just go one at a time. So we have that. And then from here, I want to say instead of add source initialized, we can go ahead and reference the ah, where was that? Uh, is it micro win helper? No, it wasn't micro win helper. It was the public one. It would have been WPF micro win. And it was towards the end in the text box. Well, maybe it was actually the XAML file. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And this is where hyper click comes into play. Jeez. Yeah, we got to get the event handler in there somewhere. And that's where this gets a little tricky. So we have the buttons right here. I think the hyperlink would be fine. So hyperlink and the button. And I want to say we should be able to go sync form and say hyper click. All right. Something around that from a syntax. That's obviously wrong. And then it was start process find. Something like that. I think the dot add click though is probably needed. Dot find name. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe we can do this. I feel like something like this would probably be more. Uh, be a little, little bit better of a correction. And this find name. If we look, it's obviously wrong for the hyperlink, but. I'm punching around in here. I get it. I think something like that would probably be right. Um, no. Probably just sync. Like that. Oh, oops. Something like that should be 
where it should work. Take it easy, Sparky. Yeah. Uh, I don't know on this one, though. We'll, we, we can try it out and see what that does. I'm pretty sure that's going to still error out. We can try, though. Let's do a compile and see if that even works. And when you tilt. Yeah, I didn't think so. I kind of figured that would uh, bomb out on me. Oh, Steven, I don't know if you missed the stream, man. It has just been a nightmare. I blew up everything. It was not fun. It was not a fun stream. Not gonna lie. Oh. Have we been going for five hours? <laughs> well, anyways, this should have been a quick fix, but uh, it was not. Yeah, at all. Uh, let's go. Oh, I think I was actually right. I should have probably put it like that. Okay. Let's try it. It's close. It's close. If that's at all correct, which, uh, you know, I get about 5% chance of this working. Judging by today's. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we could start a new chat with that. Um, I think I. Shit. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point in time, I'm just gonna exit out of that. We'll we'll figure it out another day. I just bah, I just can't today. You know, I think we'll just call it a, call it a day. Just be like, hey. I, I think we can just do that. Uh, I feel like we're just going to make more things when, when you're having a bad day. It's best not to do a bunch of coding. I think we're just going to leave it there. Uh, I'm good with that. Uh, looking at this. Uh, I think we just need to submit. Oh, did we not get this pushed? Yes. Can I help you? Oh, thank you, my love. Uh, well, all right. I forgot to push this to the main branch. So if we look at the main branch, I think this is actually incorrect. Uh, this, how did I forget to push this to the main? Oh, dang it. I did, didn't I? Just one of them things. It's okay. We're just going to call this one. Oh, no. Good night. Um, fix. Okay. Squash and merge. And we got to fix those damn unit tests too. All right. Oh, boy. Uh, this, we got a lot done. We, we, you know, it, it was, it was definitely five hours of absolute disaster awful awful coding but we made progress painful painful progress but at the end of the day we pushed out some good updates we finally got everything merged back properly uh the main branch now has everything linked properly as well and if we go over into the test branch should be um perfect you know why well, for some odd reason before i created this branch i forgot to recompile and, and do it properly but i did it this time so we're, we're fine <sighs> so i need some coffee maybe eat some food i forgot to eat before stream and i didn't do i think that's why i stopped doing early streams because whenever i do an early stream i i always end up this ends up happening so when people are like, I wish you streamed earlier, I'm going to be like, no, you don't. It's always, it, it, this is what happens when I stream earlier before, like, you know, usually I do menial tasks, like read emails or, uh, say one plus one equals three and you know, the basics <laughs> and I do that all before noon. I am absolutely worthless in the morning. This just confirms that. It's a five hour long stream that would have taken me an hour if I would have just started an hour ago. 
may, maybe, maybe, you know, 30 minutes ago. Anywho, at the very least, I'll mix in one of these like once every six months, just so y'all can have a laugh at me because wow. <laughs> uh, empty tummy, empty brain. Yeah. I think I just had two cups of coffee all day and I was like, ah, this is good enough. Uh, will there be another live on Thursday? Probably not. I have an in-house uh, uh, Christmas party at work. So you'll probably still see me on. I've been playing a lot of the late night games and stuff. So if I play a game, I usually try and stream it inside and that type of thing. And I will do uh, probably some kind of points or maybe maybe we do that on like tomorrow or something. Because I usually go into my day job on Wednesdays. I'm obviously swapping this week. Maybe we do just like a workout stream or something to where you guys can just redeem points as long as you want. I'll probably end up doing like a thousand pull-ups, uh, a thousand push-ups or whatever it might be. But uh, that'd be fun. <laughs> Nix OS discussion, that would be fun. I, like I said, I think, I, I think I'm going to wipe out the Linux partition, go back to Nix, just because I, I really want to look at home group for sure, Die Young, 100%. Yeah, usually I just go to the gym. But people have been asking about channel point redemptions and i gotta figure out something with that <laughs> drunk lfs maybe on christmas that'd be hilarious uh but all right y'all I'm, I'm getting out of here hope you guys enjoyed today's stream it was a long one it was brutal and if you guys are watching this on the replay i'm sorry i'm really sorry i was just very frustrating and i'm sure i said a whole bunch of stuff i will regret in this stream but man, when you have those PRs go wrong, whew, huh, that's just brutal. All right, y'all. Doses. Have a fantastic Christmas if I don't see you before then. And if I do, great. I'll see you in the next one.